seated. Council approach. Careful the wires there, please. All right, if everyone's ready, please rise for the jurors.
ask the jury. Maybe seated. Ms. Montgomery, I remind you, you are still under oath. Yes. <clears throat> I believe when we left off on Friday uh, morning, by the way, um, when on Friday we were talking about getting ready to sit down and talk to police after you were arrested on two charges of perjury. Yes. And uh, you told the police that you wanted to talk to them, but it took a while before you actually talked to them because um, they had to contact your attorney and write up the letter that set out the terms of uh, what would happen to you based on what you said. Yes. And essentially those terms were that what you said couldn't be used against you, but would be used as a uh, gauge for whether or not they wanted to enter in, into an agreement with you, right? Yes. And so if you said something that hurt you, um, they wouldn't be able to say Kayla admitted to this and charge you with a crime, right? Right. But at the same time, um, if they found evidence independently to support what you said and that you committed a new crime, they could charge you. I don't remember. Okay, that's fine. And uh, so this agreement did not include those conditions that you had written uh, while you were in your jail cell thinking of cooperating, right? Yes. Because they had not come to you with any sort of cooperation agreement. Right. Uh, okay. Now, you knew in going to talk to them that they wanted information about Harmony being missing, right? Yes. Whether or not she was alive? Yes. Whether, how, when she went missing? Yes. Uh, under what circumstances she went missing? Yes. And these are things that you had been thinking about since the time of your arrest, right? Yes. And uh, when you first told the lie, um, to the police and to the grand jury that the last time you saw Harmony she was driving away with Adam to be taken to her mother um, follow up showed that not to be true and you knew it right yes and one of the ways that you knew it other than what you had lived through but you knew they had found it not to be true was that you had seen and heard Crystal Sori talking on the news about her missing child, right? I didn't see that right when they were questioning me. Okay. It had been going on for a little bit though, right? Yes. And uh, also while you were in your jail cell, you got what's called discovery, right? Yes. And that is police reports and searches and the results of all that stuff that is sent to you as a part of you being charged for a crime, right? Yes. And that discovery included the investigation into Harmony being missing. Yes. And it included um, the charge of the reports and stuff on the charge of second degree assault against Adam. Yes. And so you knew what people had said to the police and stuff about that second degree assault charge. Yes. 
and you also knew that the charge was for Adam striking Harmony in the face. Yes. And you knew that there was a claim of black eyes from that, right? Yes. And when you uh, told the police uh, your story of what happened to Harmony, the allegation that you had was striking her in the face, right? Yes. And uh, you included a story of black eyes. Yes. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, the timeline of uh, your accusations against Adam. Uh, so on June 3rd, you met with the police for a pretty long time, right? Yes. And it was the, the meeting that you had was audio and video recorded. Yes. And your lawyer was present. Yes. And the police were generally the ones asking questions. Yes. But there was somebody from the attorney general's office who was also present. Yes. And um, then uh, after that, after that interview, and it was fairly long, right? Yes. And there was a break in between, but between the two of them, it was really long. Yes. And then you got booked for the perjury charges. Yes. And during booking, you said something to Detective Dunleavy about uh, Portland Pie. Yes. And that Adam had uh, taken the body to Portland Pie from the freezer and then returned it to Union Street later. Yes. The plea agreement, well, then you talked again on the June 23rd. Yes. And on June 23rd, that was also audio and video recorded. Yes. And about the same amount of people were there. Yes. And generally the same people. Yes. And uh, after that, uh, you did reach your deal, right? Yes. But, uh, and you were out for the interview on June 23rd. You were uh, back out on bail, right? Yes. And then, um, as we talked about, sometime in September, you uh, got arrested and reincarcerated. Yes. And then sometime after that, you and your attorney reached, well, you got an agreement with the state. Yes. And under that agreement, you could serve a minimum of two years. I don't remember. I think you testified on direct that you got a three and a half to seven suspended and a three and a half to seven to serve, but you could get out you could get one and a half years suspended off of that, right? Yes. So that would be a minimum of two years. Yes. And you also got credit for the time that you had put in while on bail. Yes. And so your parole hearing comes up in a month or two? May. May? Okay. Now, after you reached the agreement, you pled to that agreement in November of yes. 2022. Yes. And then in March of 2023, you had another meeting with the uh, same group of people? Yes. And where was that meeting? At the Attorney General's office in Concord. 
And you were housed in the New Hampshire State Prison for Women at that time, right? Yes. And you were transported from the prison to the Attorney General's office to talk to him. Yes. And that interview was also recorded and video recorded. Yes. And generally the police were asking the questions. Yes. And the prosecutor from the state might ask a few. Yes. But he was there for the whole thing watching. Yes. And then, uh, so that was March of 2023. And then this December of 23, 2023, you met with the state again, right? Yes. And was that the same sort of thing where you were transported from the prison to the attorney general's office? No. Where was that meeting? At the woman's state prison. Okay. And um, who was present for that? Um, myself and Chris and my lawyer and Amy. And Amy's somebody who works uh, with the Attorney General's office? Yes, she's an advocate. Okay. And there you were not recorded, right? No. And that meeting, was that was also a long meeting? Yes. Reviewing things that you had said before? Yes. Reviewing what your testimony would be at trial? Yes. Um, questioning some things that you had to say? Yes. And um, I think I said it, but it was not recorded. Right. And then you met with uh, them again in January? Yes. Same sort of situation? Yes. And that was around January 10? Yes. And was that about as long? Yeah. Going through all the stuff that you'd said before? Yes. Questioning you on the stuff that you had said before? Yes. And um, getting ready to testify here? Yes. And then January 20, oh, 19, you met with them again? January what? 19? Sorry. Yes. And same situation? Yes. So that you're going over what you'd said before? Yes. Going over what you're going to say to the jury? Yes. And there might be some questions about what you said before, and so you kind of go back through it and work through that? Yes. And uh, that was, was that it? As far as meetings? Yes. Okay. And during all that time, you had plenty of time to review in your mind your memories and talk about things that you had said. Yes. So we're going to talk about some of the things that you've said to the jury um, and before the jury trial, okay? Yes. So you talked about after your eviction, which was November 27? Yes. You lived in your car for about two weeks. Yes, a few weeks. From November 27 to uh, the day it broke down on Jan uh, December 7. Yes. A little under two weeks. Yes. Okay. Um, and as you're evicted, you take some items with you? Yes. Take some clothing for the kids? Yes. Uh, you take the toothbrush for Harmony? Yes. Make sure she can brush her teeth while she's in the car? Yes, we all had toothbrushes. Huh? We all had toothbrushes. Okay, so Declan and Seamus also were brushing their teeth? Well, they had baby toothbrushes. Okay. And so you made sure that you packed those things that the kids need for their hygiene? Yes. And uh, some clothes for each of them? Yes. In addition to what they were wearing? Yes. Um, and then you probably got some extra bibs and stuff for when you're feeding Declan. 
Yes. And diapers. Yes. And food. Yes. Okay. And um, extra underpants for Harmony. I don't remember. Okay. Uh, you had outerwear for the kids. Yes. Coats and shoes. Yes. And um, socks. Yes. And the next day was Thanksgiving. Yes. And do you recall where you stayed on Thanksgiving? Um, no, I don't remember. You didn't celebrate a Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving Day, right? No. Okay. And the day after Thanksgiving, you went to your mom's house? Yes. And uh, you went the day after Thanksgiving to see if uh, she could put you up? Yes. And she wasn't able to? No. But you were there at her house for a while. Yes. Um, and you used that time to clean up the kids. Yes. Because they had been in the car the night before. Yes. And to um, clean them up a lot better than just wiping uh, the boys when you change their diapers, right? Yes. And brushing their teeth. Yes. And changing their clothes. Yes. Do you use her laundry while you were there? I don't remember. Okay. And um, your mom took that time to get to know her grandchildren. Yes. Including Harmony. Yes. And uh, she couldn't put you up, so you had to leave. Yes. And you stayed in the car that night. Yes. And then that was, by the way, November 29, the day after Thanksgiving, right? Yes. And that's the same day that you had a car accident, right? The 29th, yes. Okay, and that was a car accident with Tabitha Scott in the front seat, you in the back seat with the kids. Yes. And Adam driving. Yes. Sorry. Um, and uh, police came after the accident. Yes. And you had uh, Declan in a car seat. Yes. Seamus was in some sort of... Uh, he was in a car seat. Okay. And Harmony was not? No. You did not have a car seat for Harmony, right? Right. And you were in the back, so um, she wasn't in a seatbelt either, right? No. And that was a problem when the police officer came, right? Yes. And... Uh, blanket was thrown over Harmony and she was told to hide so that the police officer wouldn't know that you had too many kids in the car that were and one was unrestrained no okay you were hiding the fact that you did not have Harmony uh, restrained in the back seat at the time of the accident yes and then uh Adam had his license at that time, right? <clears throat> I don't remember if he lost it then or not. Okay. Well, he was able to drive away from there after the police officer talked to you all, right? Yes. So he probably had his license, right? Probably, yes. Okay. And Tabitha Scott, your friend that was in the car at the time of the accident, uh, she was a friend, right? Yes. And um, she really liked Harmony, right? Yes. She would play with Harmony, right? Yes. And sometimes uh, play dress up and stuff like that with her, right? No, but okay. I don't remember that happening. Okay. Remember taking... Uh, photographs and like photoshopping them to put stuff on them and stuff like that in yes. photographs okay and <clears throat> Tabitha was somebody that you would have babysit the kids sometimes yes and sometimes it would just be harmony and you would take the two boys with you or sometimes she might do all three yes and um, your accident on the 29th uh do you recall that being in the afternoon i don't remember 
Okay. And do you recall if you went to your mom's before or after that? Um, I think I went to my mom's later that night. Okay. And Harmony did not have black eyes when you went to your mom's, no. right? So she did not have black eyes when she was in that accident, right? No. Pardon? No. Okay. Now, uh, December 1st. <coughs> Well, that was an accident on the 29th, and you made a lot up a lie about December, November 30th. What did you actually do on November 30th? I don't remember. Okay. How about December 1? Do you know what you did that day? No. Do you know where you stayed? In the car. Do you know where the car was? No. Was it at Colonial Village? I remember that's where we would normally park and sleep in the car. Okay. Um, you said that uh, Anthony Bodero, and am I pronouncing that right? Bodero? Yes. Okay. Uh, that he would come down to the car while you were in the parking lot. Yes. And I think that you said that he would give you drugs. Yes. And that he would... Uh, see Harmony during that two, less than two week period that you were in the car? Yes. And that would he would come down, she would wave to him? Yes. And uh, he would wave back? Yes. And um, Harmony was not under cover when she would wave to Anthony Berdera? No. And um, she was not hidden from public view or Anthony Badero's view when he would come down in the morning. No. And I think that you said that he might come, maybe not every day, but pretty frequently. Yes. And uh, he also brought you some Thanksgiving leftovers. Yes. And when he did that, he uh, saw Harmony. Yes. Now, there was another accident on December 2nd. Do you remember that? No. Do you remember that you had another accident outside of the clinic after the accident on November 29? Yes. And that was uh, what during a time that you and Adam had been going to the clinic, yes. right? Yes. And the kids were not with you at that time. I don't remember if they were there or not. Okay. So it is, and I think you said reviewing the accident report would not refresh your recollection? Or would I, it? I don't if, remember. If I gave you the accident report, do you think it might refresh your recollection? I will try and remember. page document and I've actually highlighted the uh, date on the first page just because there's so much information but do you think if you review the accident report it might refresh your recollection that your kids were not in the car? I remember the accident but I don't remember if the kids were in the car or not. Okay. Even looking at this I don't remember. I just remember we were in an accident. Okay. Outside the clinic. Okay. And I think we talked about that a little bit on Friday that uh, the police asked you about that as well yes. um, during your interview, right? Yes. And that you said that maybe Tabitha or maybe your mom was babysitting the kids. 
Yes. So if you were in the accident and the kids were not with you, they would have been with somebody that you trusted to babysit them. Yes. Harmony would not have been hidden from whoever that babysitter was. No. Harmony would not have been hidden from public view. No. Harmony would not have been hidden under a blanket. No. Now, um, do you recall it snowing at all while you were say, sorry, staying at the Colonial Village parking lot? I know that it, it, there was snow on and off. Okay. There was actually a bit of a storm. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And um, that was when you were parked at Colonial Village? Yes. And did you go inside to the Bodero's residence during that storm? I don't remember going in there. Okay. Did you ever take the children into Mr. Bodero's residence to brush their teeth or to clean them up or anything like that? I, th I remember bringing the kids up to his apartment, but I don't remember when that was. Okay. Um, so let's talk about living in the car. Um, you got a couple of boys that are quite young. Yes. One is about 11 months. Yes. And your other son was two and a half-ish. Yes. Um, and they can only stay in the same position one time for a certain amount of time, right? Right. And then they start getting pretty rambunctious, right? Yes. And fussy. Yes. And Declan, if he gets fussy, will cry. Yes. And that'll make Seamus cry. I don't remember that. Okay. And Harmony um, also, maybe not as rambunctious, but would get pretty fussy about being in the car for a long time, right? Yes. And so you would try and find ways to entertain them. Yes. And one of the ways that you entertained them was to go uh, to a public place, like maybe the mall, just to get them walking around inside for a while. Yeah, I don't remember that. You remember losing your phone at the mall while you were walking, you and Adam were walking around with the kids? No. Okay. Um, one of the ways that you would entertain them was to take them to places like Walmart when you were shopping for more food. I don't remember going there. Okay. What were the ways that you entertained them? I don't remember what we did with them. I just remember living in the car. Okay. But you didn't have the children in the car 24 seven, right? I don't remember. Okay. Did you play or take them to walk on those balance uh, beams and stuff on that little play center at the back of the parking lot at Colonial? I don't remember. Okay. Let's talk about the food that you had. Um, you would eat things like tortilla wraps. Yeah, we had tortilla wraps. Bananas? Yes. Peanut butter? Yes. Apples? I don't remember apples. Baby food? Yes. Cereal? Yes. Formula? Yes. Uh, and if you had cereal, you had milk? I don't remember keeping milk in the car like that, but... Okay. Possibly. So they, if you had baby cereal, Seamus would just eat it dry? Yes. And um, what was Seamus eating at that time? He was doing a mix of baby food and uh, real food? Yes. Okay. And sometimes you'd feed him your food? Yes. Little bits, right? Yes. And you'd have to make sure that he took it and put it in his mouth, right? Yes. Instead of dropping it on the car floor. Yes. And Declan had formula. Did he also um, 
Baby food. Baby food? Yes. How about the cereal? No. So you would have to turn around and feed Declan in the back seat, or would you put him on your lap and feed him in the front seat? I'd turn his car seat around so that he'd be facing that direction so I could feed him. Okay. And um, diapers? Yes. So uh, when Declan or Seamus would go to the bathroom in the car, they would be going to the bathroom in diapers, right? Yes. And Declan, his diapers didn't smell too much, right? Because he was still just a baby. I don't remember. Okay. But Seamus's diapers would smell, right? Yes. And um, so Seamus and Declan are both going to the bathroom in the car in their diapers. Yes. And you would change them where? In the car. And... uh, all the time? If we were just living in our car, yes. And then you would throw the diapers in the dumpster? Yes. And certainly in Colonial Village, you had a dumpster nearby. Yes. And then, um, you would try to clean them up more than just the wipes when you change their diapers, right? Yes. And that would be in public restrooms. I don't remember going to public restrooms. Where would you clean them more than just wipes? I don't remember. But you remember that you would? I remember cleaning them with wipes. I don't remember bringing them to any, like, restroom or stuff like that. I don't remember that. Okay. So you talked about going to your mother's on the 29th of November, is that the last time that they got a thorough cleaning? I don't remember. Okay. Well, you wouldn't do that to your kids, right? I don't, I wouldn't, but if I was stuck in the situation I was stuck in, then yeah. Okay. Um, You had your own hygiene to worry about in the car, right? Yes. And uh, I think that you said on direct that you would ask Harmony to come with you, and sometimes she wouldn't. Right. Sometimes she would. Yes. And where would you go for your hygiene? If we ended up going to a gas station that had a bathroom. Okay. So uh, one of the places that you used to clean yourself and Harmony up was public restroom and a gas station. Yes. Perhaps convenience store? Yes. Perhaps Walmart? I don't remember going to Walmart. Okay. So sometimes she would come out of the car with you and go into the convenience store and you would clean her up, right? Yes. And she would not be under a blanket. No. And um, sometimes she didn't uh, go with you. Right. And if she had not gone to the bathroom for a long time, would you insist? I would ask her. Uh Uh-huh. And she would say what? She would say, no, she doesn't have to use the bathroom. Okay. Uh, And if she hadn't gone to the bathroom for all day, would you insist that she go to the bathroom with you? Yes. And would, when you insisted, did she go with you? No. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, you talked about sometimes Harmony would go to the bathroom in the car. Yes. Was she wearing underwear during that whole time? Yes. Where did you clean her underwear? We didn't clean her underwear. Okay. So if, and I think that you said it was uh, urinating and defecating in the car. Yes. And I'll call it pee and poop, okay? Yes. And so you said that she did both. Yes. And then, uh, so suppose she peed in the car. What would you do to clean it up? 
we would change your clothes. Okay. What else? That's it. Would you clean the car? Wipe the seat, yeah. Okay. And would you clean the underwear that she was wearing? No, they'd get put in a bag. Okay. So you had like maybe seven or eight or nine pair of underwear for her to wear? I don't remember. Okay. And you said we would clean her up. That would be you and Adam? Yes. And uh, when she... How many sets of clothes did she have? I don't remember. Probably just a couple, right? Yeah. Be Sustained. Okay. Do you know if you had more than a couple? I don't remember. Okay. But if she urinated in her pants, you would have to um, not only change her underpants, but also her um, leggings, right? Yes. And do you know if you had a bunch of leggings as well as a bunch of underpants to replace them? I don't remember. Okay. Uh, and then when she pooped, uh, you would clean her? Yes. You would wipe her with the baby wipes? Yes. And then uh, would you take her to a public restroom to get her more clean? No. Overruled. Pardon? Oh. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. No, I don't remember. Okay. So, um, and you would sort of understand that she was going through a difficult time because of so many changes in her life? Yes. And so you would get, understand and tell her, Harmony, I know this is difficult, but you really have to tell us when you go to the bathroom. Yes. Before you go to the bathroom, right? Yes. Because, uh, and you try to encourage, come with me, we'll take care of it, we'll be in the bathroom, come with me, right? Yes. And um, did you ever buy pull-ups for her when it became uh, more than a one-time thing? I don't remember. Okay. Something you might have thought of, right? I don't remember. Okay. And uh, being cooped up in that car for so much time with the kids was a little bit difficult, right? Yes. And uh, it was difficult for the kids too, right? Yes. So uh, sometimes chaos would just erupt, right? Yes. Declan crying, Seamus crying, Harmony crying, right? No. Okay. They weren't really, they never really cried that much. Okay. But when they cried, it would sort of cascade, right? Kind of, yeah. Okay. And it's like what's happening to one would go to the other and the other, and it would just be chaos, right? Yes. And uh, how would you sue them? Um, I don't remember. Okay. Now, you said that uh, Bodero didn't want you staying at the Colonial Village parking lot, right? Right. He was actually afraid somebody might notice and yes. he would get in trouble. Yes. But you also said that he came down daily or every other day or so to give you drugs. Yes. So he didn't want to come down and in public hand drugs over to a car that's squatting in a parking lot where it shouldn't be. Right. Um, uh, he came down to meet with Adam. Yes. And uh, Adam occasionally would drive him places because Adam had his license. Right. And he would drive Madero's car and you would be there with the kids. I don't remember that. Okay. Um, but he would have Adam driving him places? 
I remember he did that when we were staying at the house. I don't remember him doing that when we lived in the car. Okay. Um, well, Badero wasn't... Did you have money while you were in the car? Not really. Okay. So you pretty much had to count your pennies when you bought more food and stuff like that? Yes. And you couldn't splurge in anything because it was pretty tight, right? Yes. But when Adam would meet up with um, Mr. Badero, he would be able to get some drugs. Yes. And uh, Anthony Badero was not giving him drugs for free. No. Right? Adam was doing Anthony some favors. I don't remember that. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, approach. Objection is sustained. The question can be rephrased. So when Adam and Anthony got together, um, after a while, Adam would be able to come back with some drugs. Not when we were living in the car. Anthony Badero was not giving out drugs for free, right? Overruled. Right? Sometimes you would, sometimes you wouldn't. Okay. Um, and actually, on the day that your car died, um, and you described going to the clinic and coming out and going to Burger King and then going back to the parking lot, um, Adam sent you, asked you to go up to Anthony Badero's to get some drugs, right? I don't remember. Okay. And um, he asked you to do it because Anthony might front you a bag because he never says no, right? Approach. <clears throat> And that uh, he asked you to go to uh, Badera's to get drugs that day because Badera would front you. Overruled. It's cross examination. You may proceed. Would front you a bag because he never says no to you, right? That's not true. Which part? That he never says no to me. Okay. But on that day, that's why Adam asked you to go up to Badera's to get some drugs. I don't remember that day. Okay. Overruled. I'm going to show you. A copy of the transcript of the interview that you did with the police on the 23rd. And it's marked uh, Defendant's Exhibit two, D2 for ID. Could you say that? Uh, could you just repeat the ID? Exhibit number, number D2 for ID. D2. Okay. D2. Thank you. So, may I approach, Your Honor? Yes, you may. Okay. Now, we talked about your interview on June 23rd with police. I'll come up in a second, right? 
Yes. And that interview was recorded, right? Yes. And um, Detective Jack Dunleavy was there? Yes. And Detective Max Rahill? Yes. And uh, a U.S. Marshal was there? Yes. And an Assistant Attorney General was there? Yes. And your attorney was there? Yes. And uh, you were there? Yes. And that was June 23rd. I'm going to show you a copy of this transcript and point out some stuff so you'll know that's what I'm talking about, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see the date. Yes. And the people that were present. Yes. And so I'm going to point you to page... And like with anything that I give you, I'm going to point to an area that I'm interested in, but you can read before and after to sort of orient yourself, okay? okay. I'm going to point you to page, uh, to that area there and ask you to take a look. Yes. your recollection about what you did that day? I remember saying that, but I still don't remember that happening. I don't know. I don't remember that day. I don't remember that happening that specific day. I'm going to unpack that a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I pointed you to something that you told the police officers and everybody else that was there on June 23rd, right? Yes. And on June 23rd, you were present to let them know, uh, maybe to correct some stuff from June 3rd and talk more about what happened uh, back in December of 2019. Yes. And you, they wanted you, you knew they wanted you to talk about your memory, right? Yes. They didn't want you to make something up, right? Right. And you had had plenty of time to think about it, right? Yes. And to uh, remember what happened, right? Yes. And some of the details that they were interested in, they sort of touched on, they talked about in June 3rd. Yes. And so are you saying that uh, you didn't remember that day when you spoke to them on June 23rd? 
or that you did remember it in June 23rd, but you've forgotten now? I don't remember that specific thing Uh huh. on that day. Like me actually going to see Tone and asking for her bag of drugs. I don't remember that. But it is something that you told the police that day, right? Right. And that you and Adam were in the car and uh, you went up to Tones to get a bag of drugs. That's me. I knew that tone. Uh, but let me actually check because I don't know that I checked it when I walked in. Uh, okay. So it was not me, but if I could make sure mine's off. You're not disagreeing that you did tell the police that, you just don't remember telling the police that. Right. And if you did tell the police that back in June of 2023, uh, you would have been telling them, this is what I remember. Right. Okay. So um, you don't remember it today, but you told them that you went up to get. Approach. Oh, asked and answered. Overruled. Go ahead drugs from uh, your friend Tone Badero. I don't remember that specific thing happening that day because I've done it a lot of times. Okay, but you're not disagreeing that you told him that that's what you did that day. Right. Okay. And um, Tone sometimes will give you drugs for free. Right. But that's not what he normally does. Right. Uh, and, uh, okay. And throughout the time that you were in the car, uh, Adam would do things to find ways to get money to buy drugs from Mr. Badero. Yes. And one of the ways that he did that was to do things for Mr. Badero. Not while we were living in the car. Okay. Um, now, there were a lot of people that uh, parked at the Colonial Village parking lot, right? Yes. And it might not have a whole lot of people during the day, but in the morning before work and in the afternoon after work, it was pretty full. Yes. And um, you did not want to be noticed in the parking lot. Right. Because somebody might tell on you and you'd have to leave. Right. And you wanted to be there close to Mr. Badero's apartment. Yes. But um, especially in the morning and in the afternoon when people were moving around more before work and coming home from work, you wanted the kids pretty quiet. If they were quiet, I don't remember. Well, you didn't want your children screaming in the car, right? Right. You wouldn't want that cascade of chaos where Declan might cry and then everybody starts crying. That's not a normal thing that would happen. And you wouldn't want it to happen, right? Right. You would want them, especially during that time period, to be pretty quiet so nobody notices. I don't remember that. Almost every morning, you um, <clears throat> went to the clinic in the morning. Yes. Um, maybe you missed one, but certainly not. It was a regular daily thing, right? 
Right. And you would get up and you would leave the parking lot, go to the clinic, get your um, dosage, and then go off somewhere else. Right. Might go to Burger King. Yes. Might go to a gas station. Yes. Might go to some other place and use the facilities and restroom. I don't remember that. Okay, if you went to a gas station, you would use the facilities, right? Right, but you, never mind. Okay, there were other places that you went besides a gas station and Burger King, right? Right. Okay, and if facilities were available to use, you would take the opportunity to take the kids out and clean them up. Yes. Okay, and if Harmony had um, messed her clothes, would you hand wash the clothes? Overruled. No. Okay. We'd change her clothes. Okay. But if she peed in her pants, her clothes would still smell like urine. Right. And if she did it a lot, you had a limited amount of clothes, right? Right. And if she pooped her pants... You'd also have to remove the clothes and change them with something else. Right. And you didn't have two weeks' worth of clothes for Harmony. No. As a matter of fact, you described what Harmony was wearing, and it was pretty much the same thing the whole time, right? No. The leggings that you remembered that she was wearing? Right. Um, those were the leggings that she was wearing when she went, left the um, house? No. Okay. And uh, I was talking about money, that Adam would find ways to get some money. You were not working, right? Right. And you were not pulling in any money, right? Right. You were watching the kids. We were staying in our car. And you were watching the kids, right? Yeah. And you were not working? No. And you talked on direct when you were being questioned by the state, and you said that you had confessed to your crime of theft at Dunkin' Donuts, right? Yes. And you said that you had taken responsibility for that crime, right? Yes. Well, you actually got caught in that theft, right? Yes. And uh, you were given an option of writing a confession and reaching a restitution agreement or the police would be called. Yes. And so accepting responsibility was taking the lesser way out of the problem so that you wouldn't get a theft charge. Right. And um, you reached an agreement to get out of criminal charges. Right. Okay. You were held responsible for that charge, yes. for that crime, right? Yes. Just in a different way. By the way, when you used drugs in the car, you wouldn't use them all. You would sort of spread out the usage as much as you could? Yes. And um, so you may not get that as good of a feeling as you would get uh, if you had more money and a better situation, right? No. Okay. Um, Doing the drugs sort of eased uh, life's worries? Not really. Okay. Yeah, because life's worries still intruded even while you were using the drugs, right? Yes. And especially if the kids were fussy and everything, you couldn't just sit back and relax with the drugs. You still had to pay attention to the kids. Right. 
And if they were crying, you still had to soothe the kids. Yes. And if they needed changing or Seamus, um, uh, P Peter pooped in the car or Harmony Peter pooped in the car, you couldn't just sit back and relax. You had to do something. Yes. Okay. We talked about those several statements that you gave to uh, the police and the uh, prosecutor from the Attorney General's office about the death of Harmony. Yes. And um, those stories changed a bit over time. Yes. And when you first told the story, you said that uh, uh, Harmony was peeing and pooping in the car, and Adam punched her 10 to 15 times in the parking lot of the Colonial. Yes. And that it was like at 2 or 3 in the morning. Yes. And um, when the officer asked, you mean in the overnight hours, you said yes, it was in the overnight hours that this happened. Yes. Because something did happen at 2 or 3 in the morning on uh, the day that Harmony died. Yes. And that was that Adam got in the car and Harmony did not wake up. No, that's not what happened. Okay. What happened at 2 or 3 in the morning on that day? Harmony had an accident and Adam kept punching her in the head. Okay. At 2 or 3 in the morning. Yeah, it was still like, it was the middle of the night. And so, in the middle of the night at two or three in the morning, um, you're saying that Adam punched her uh, 10 to 15 times. Yes. And uh, uh, Harmony was crying. Yes. Screaming. Yes. Declan would start screaming. I don't remember what Declan and Seamus were doing. Well, that cascade effect that when one of them is crying and there's chaos in the car, all of them were crying, right? Not really. Okay. Um, and then what did you do? What did I do? Yeah. I tried telling him to stop, but he doesn't listen. Okay. What did you do about the mess? I didn't do anything about the mess. Did you clean the car? No. Did you clean Harmony? No. Was it a pee or a poop? I don't remember. <laughs> Smells are considerably different, right? Right. But the them... car already stunk. It stunk from all the kids living in the car, eating in the car, peeing and pooping in the car, and food being left around the car, right? Yes. And body odor. Yes. And so if Harmony peed in her seat at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, are you saying that you left her sitting in a puddle of pee? Yes. And if she pooped, at two or three o'clock in the morning, you're saying you left her sitting in her own defecation? Yes. Why? Because I was scared of Adam. Did he tell you don't clean her up? No, but when I told him to stop, he gave me the crazy eyes that he has, and I just didn't want to do anything because I was scared of him. Okay. And then things calmed down and everybody went to sleep? No. They Everybody stayed up? I don't remember if everybody stayed up, but I know I didn't go back to bed. Okay. 
So you were up till two or three in the morning until you woke up uh, until it was time to go to the clinic. Yes. And I think uh, the clinic was seven or eight in the morning? Seven. Okay. So you sat in the car and did nothing until seven in the morning. Right. And you don't remember kids crying and screaming? No. I believe that you testified to on direct that Adam woke up and smelled pee or poop. Yes. Do you know which that was? I'm sorry. Urination or defecation, do you recall? No. Okay. And um, he got mad at her for peeing or pooping in the car. Yes. Was it a fresh pee or poop? I don't know. Okay. So you don't know if she peed or pooped in the car from 2 or 3 in the morning? No. Okay. And one of the things I think that you described uh, Adam saying at one of the things was, why don't you let us know? Yes. Like he's surprised at Harmony that she's smelling in the morning? So you're saying he struck her in the morning before the clinic because uh, I think that you said before to the police because she peed herself while still in the parking lot? Yes. And that made him mad, you said? Yes. And um, so she peed before you went to the clinic? It just smelled like urination okay. all the time. Okay. And um, you, she didn't have any injuries that you saw that morning, right? No. And uh, you go to the clinic, right? Yes. And at the clinic, uh, the two of you have to go in one at a time, right? Yes. And. The reason that you have to go in one at a time is because somebody had tattled on you at some time earlier for leaving the kids in the car while the two of you went together. Yes. And so uh, you were parked in the clinic right out front? Yes. And other people are also getting their dosage? Yes. And um, at least at some point, people were paying attention about, well, uh, I'll take that back. Uh, so you're right out front of the clinic. Uh, I think you, looking at that paperwork, saw that you went in first. Yes. And then uh, Adam went in. Yes. And did you take that time to clean the car? No. Why? Because I didn't. Okay. Uh, I think you testified that when Adam got in the car, you said, I'm hungry, and I'm sure the kids are hungry. Yes. And it was you that wanted to go to Burger King for food. Yes. And did you want to go to Burger King because you were hungry? Yes. Did you want to go to Burger King because you wanted to clean the car? No. Why not? I didn't. Okay. Just you were hungry and you thought maybe the kids were hungry too? Yes. Okay. And Adam drove to Burger King to get you food and food for the kids? Yes. And Adam was not interested in food, right? That's not true. Why not? Because um, he was hungry too. Okay. Um, do you remember telling the prosecutor that Adam, um, I'm sorry, on March 16, 
of 2023. Do you recall telling the prosecutor that Adam was not interested in food? No. All right, I'm going to take a different exhibit. Actually, I'm going to use a different copy.
I'm going to show you a copy of a transcript of the interview of March 16, 2023. And like before, I'm going to ask you to read a portion of it, and then I'm going to ask you uh, a question, okay? Okay. So here it is. Not quite as pretty. I'm going to be asking you about this, but you could read before or after. Okay. Okay. You know what you're saying. So you, during that interview, told the police that Adam didn't care if he ate or not, right? Right. He wasn't there because he wanted to eat, right? Right. And uh, if the prosecutor said in opening that he went to Burger King because he wanted to eat, and he did eat while driving away, that's not your recollection, right? No. Okay. And that's not something you ever told the police, right? Right. It's just plain wrong. No, you went wrong here. And one of your claims is that on the way to Burger King, and I think that you said that he gets in the car at the clinic and smells urine. Urine and says, Harmony, why do you keep doing that? Why don't you tell us when you have to go? Yes. And he got angry outside the clinic? Yes. And he uh, struck her in the head? Yes. In front of the clinic? In the car, yes. In the car, right? Yes. Where people are going in and out of the clinic? Yes. And where at one point somebody had noticed that you left your kids alone in the car and told on you, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you said that he was also yelling at her. Yes. And uh, you told the jury that she was making weird noises on the way to Burger King? Yes. Okay. And you said that there were three different events on the way to Burger King three different times that he was maybe at a stoplight or something and would strike her again? Yes. And yelling at her? Yes. And striking her three to four times each event? Yes. And uh, Harmony's crying? Yes. And Declan's crying? Yes. And Seamus is crying? No. Why not? Not just because somebody's crying doesn't mean the other one cries. Uh, Adam yelling in the car did yeah. not cause Seamus to cry? No. And Adam striking Seamus' sister right next to him didn't cause Seamus to cry? No, he didn't. And Harmony crying on. in pain didn't cause Seamus to cry? No. Okay. Okay. You said the final time that Adam 
hit Harmony in the head, uh, he said he felt something. Yes. That, uh, and I think uh, you claim that Adam said, I think I heard it this time, I did something. Yes. And was that in a scared voice? Yes. Okay, so Adam thought perhaps he went overboard? Yes. And this was pulling into the parking lot at Burger King? Yes. And so, being scared, he drives up to the drive-in window? Yes. He orders the food that you want? Yes. He pays cash? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. When you spoke to police back in June of 2022, you recalled that he paid in cash. Objection, Your Honor. Basis? This is a good time for a break. I'm going to ask the witness to uh, stay there. We'll take 15 minutes and then we will resume the testimony. All rise for the jurors, please. Same reminders, ladies and gentlemen. Don't talk about the testimony, please.
please be seated. Uh, wait. Attention, please. Party from the matter with Stacey Adam Montgomery. We're bringing the witness now. Ready, we'll bring in the jurors. Please rise for the jurors, please. Please be seated. Right before we took the break, I asked you uh, if you told the uh, interviewers, police or whoever, uh, in June that you thought you paid cash. Yes. And. Uh, you didn't remember, right? No. If I showed you a copy of your transcript, I'm going to ask you again to read what you need to, but this will be what I'm asking you about. Police in June of 20, June 23rd of 2022, that you thought you paid cash. Yes. And that would make sense because Adam was doing little things to try and collect cash, right? Yes. And you certainly had no money in the bank on your card, no. right? Right. So, uh, after this panic that you say that Adam feels, um, goes up to the drive-thru, right? Yes. 
And um, the jury was at the Burger King, and you sort of make a roundabout way into uh, the drive-thru, right? Yes. And it's wide open there, right? Yes. And people are coming in and out of Burger King, right? Yes. And you stop at one place to make the order. Yes. And you ordered uh, croissants and hash browns. Yes. And uh, this was for you and the kids. Yes. And then you pull around, turn, and go to uh, where you actually have communication with a live person. Yes. And the first thing that uh, you do before you get your food or anything like that is turn over, uh, but Adam is doing it because he's in the driver's seat, right? Right. Turning over the cash. Yes. Might have been card, but probably not, right? Right. You know, do you have a specific recollection now of whether it was cash? No. Okay. So assuming cash, but card would be the same, you turn it over to the clerk, right? Yes. And then the clerk uh, does what the clerk does with money. Yes. And then uh, opens the window again and maybe counts out the change. Yes. And Adam would be there with his hand out and change being counted out into his hand, right? Yes. And then maybe that change is handed to you so that he can then reach in again for um, the food. Yes. And when the food comes in, he probably takes the bag and gives it to you. Yes. And uh, you said that just before that, the... Um, Adam was scared because he had been striking harmony and something different happened. Yes. And uh, while he's striking harmony, the children are screaming. Yes. Going in through the Burger King parking lot. Yes. Going through the Burger King order spot. Yes. And going through the Burger King drive through Yes. And you did not do anything, as you said, uh, with harmony right right she was just laying there in the back yes and uh, right there as he drives up to the clerk at the Burger King parking lot yes okay And you said Harmony is moaning in the back seat? Yes. And uh, I don't think you said it, but you were, was it a moan that you understood to be a dying child? No. Okay. What was the moan? I don't know, she was making a noise. Okay. And you didn't um, check on her, right? No. Didn't throw a cover on her? No. Didn't um, have to turn around and soothe the boys in the back seat to make them quiet? No. They weren't always crying just because one other kid was crying. They weren't always crying. But violence, chaos, yelling, and screaming would make them cry. They didn't, they weren't really, they never really cried that much. Okay. Okay. Um, did you ask to run in and maybe get some extra napkins to clean up the urine on the seat? No. Um, with that smell lingering so bad, did you think maybe to ask if Harmony could go in and clean up? No. Did you do anything to deal with the smell of urine? No, because Adam said she could just lay in it. Okay. All right. And he was upset with the smell? Yes. Okay. All right. And I think, actually, um, you say that the kids may not have been crying. I think that, did you tell the police that you thought the kids were sleeping? Yeah, they didn't really make any noise. Okay. Hey, 
Actually, that assault never happened, did it? Yes, it did. Okay. Well, you describe physically trying to stop him, yes. Adam. Yes. You describe verbally trying to stop him. Yes. Right? Uh, nobody wants a person to strike and hurt a child. Right. Especially a five-year-old child under your care. Right. And you cannot allow that to happen. You can't sit by and allow that to happen, right? Right. Okay. But you said that you stopped trying to do anything because he looked at you with the face of pure evil. Yes. Uh, so you just got scared and shut up, right? Yes. Because his face was pure evil. Right? Yes. And pure evil, a person with pure evil is not someone you want to protect. No. And a person who is pure evil is not someone that you love. Well, that's hard to say. Okay. A person of pure evil is not someone you want raising your children. Right. Okay. And you would do anything to get your kids away from pure evil. Yes. And uh, even though Harmony was your child, you felt the same about her. Yes. Uh, she was pretty much your child. Yes, I helped take care of her. Okay. And when you and Adam split up years later, or March of 2021, you wanted him back. We were both trying to fix our family and get back. You wanted him back with the family and raising the children. Right. And um, when uh, you were sitting in your cell thinking about this and reliving it, and you wrote that note about your thoughts about what you wanted, you indicated that the children needed Adam as well as you, right? Right. And that's not the face of pure evil. Right? No. Okay. So, You said to the jury Friday, I believe, that you fed the children at the Burger King parking lot? Yes. Okay. We were leaving the parking lot. As you were leaving the parking lot, you were feeding them? Yeah, I handed them food. Okay. Who did you hand food? I handed Seamus some food. Uh-huh. I handed Declan some food. Uh-huh. And I put... I reached behind my seat and was giving Harmony the food, but I just put it down, thinking that she was going to be grabbing it. Okay. So, um, do you remember telling the police that you fed the children at the Colonial parking lot? No. Okay. Did you feed the children at the Colonial parking lot? I don't know. Okay. Um, Now, your car died at the intersection uh, late morning-ish. Does that sound right? Yes. And you were at the clinic at 7-ish? Yes. Okay, so you were in the Colonial parking lot for a while, right? Yes. All right. And... Uh, You don't recall talking to the police about feeding your children in the back seat at the Colonial? No. All right. Um, first of all, we'll, before I ask some more questions, set up the situation. Declan is in the car seat by the, uh, behind the driver? No. You've got Seamus there now? Yes. And 
uh, so you're having Declan in the middle seat. Yes. And Harmony is on uh, the passenger side behind you. Yes. And Declan is under a year. Yes. And you got croissants. What were you feeding Declan? Pieces of food. Okay. So you would break off a little piece of hash brown? Yeah, something. I don't remember what I was feeding him. And would you hand it to him and make sure he grabbed it? No. You just sort of put it back there? I put it in his mouth. Oh, uh, so you would turn around from the driver's side and put little pieces of food in Declan's mouth? No. What? I reached my arm back and put it in his mouth because he's in the middle. Okay. And Seamus, okay, so would you turn to reach your arm back and look and make sure you're getting it in his mouth? I could feel it. So you reach back with your arm and you feel around for his mouth and put it in? Yes. Okay. And then Seamus, you also have to give him small pieces of food, right? Right. And with Seamus, you break off a small thing and you give him and make sure he takes it in his hand, right? Right. And so you turn around and reach over to Seamus and hand him his um, piece of food. I didn't turn around. Why not? Because I could see him. Okay. I just handed it to him like that. He was sitting in the car seat. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, do you remember describing to the police? Oh, oh. And also, you said that you took some and you handed it back to Harmony? I gave a sandwich to her, yes. You gave a croissant to her? Yes. So you bought the croissant for Harmony or for you? There was three of them. Okay. There was one for her and then there was one for Adam and one for me and the one that I had I broke apart and gave to the kids. Okay. And uh so what'd you do? Put the whole sandwich back there for Harmony? Yes. Did you check and see if she was eating it? No. Why not? Because I didn't. Okay. Okay. And um, Harmony's position while you're doing that, I think uh, she's leaning against her brother beside her? Yes. And then sometimes she's leaning up against the door, I think? Yes. And uh, you don't check on her? No. Don't check and see if she's eating? No. But you make sure that you've put the food in Declan's mouth? <laughs> yeah, because they're younger. So you weren't concerned about Harmony at that point? That's not what I'm saying. Okay. You feed them directly because they were younger. You don't feed Harmony directly because, or make sure that she's eating. Why? Because she can open the package and eat it. Did you hear her open the package? No, I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. And so after that, you went up to Bodero's to get some drugs. We went to Colonial Village. S sustained. Okay. So when you went to Bodero's to get some drugs. Overruled. Council approach. <clears throat>
So after you ate, uh, you got some drugs. I don't remember doing that. Uh, you remember approach? having... Council approach? Rephrase the question. And after you ate, uh, you and Adam uh, did some drugs. Yes. And uh, you did not ask Bodero to call 911? No. You did not ask your friend Bodero to come out to the car to maybe uh, help you while you checked on Harmony? No. You did not ask to take Harmony up to Badero's apartment to maybe clean her up and make sure she was okay? No. Okay. And uh, fair to say today you don't know where you got those drugs from? We were always at Colonial Village where he lived and he's the one that we got drugs off of. Okay. And... Uh, But you do recall actually feeding all three children in the back seat, right? Yes. And you recall that you were um, feeding them, and do you recall that you said that you were um, feeding them with one hand because your other hand was in the bag for your food? No. Okay. So let's talk about why you left the colonial. Um, at that point where eventually the car broke down, okay? Um, did you have concerns about Harmony in the car at the time that you left? No. Did you look at Harmony at all? in the car before you left? No. And you said that he, Adam, struck her God knows how many times? Yes. And that she had been crying and that Adam actually got scared that he had hurt her? Yes. And you never checked? No. And uh, you described on direct when you were talking to the um, state that whenever you all were out in public, uh, Harmony would be covered up so no one would see. Right. That wasn't quite true, right? Not in the beginning. Okay. And um, not at Burger King. Yes, she was under the blanket in Burger King. Okay. Do you recall saying that she had a blanket on her lap? No. When you were feeding her? I just knew the blanket was there. And that you put little uh, pieces of food on her um, blanket that was on her lap to feed her? 
No. I don't remember putting pieces of food on her lap. Just sort of toss back a sandwich? Yeah. Okay. And you had no concerns about Harmony? No. She, you said that she was moaning before she was uh, at Burger King? Yeah. And you said that she was moaning after Burger King? Yes. And that moaning had you concerned? Yes. But you didn't check? No. And I think you just said because you weren't concerned. No, I am concerned. I was concerned. Okay. And you didn't check on her? No. And um, Adam, you described as being scared that he would hurt her, had hurt her. Yes. And where did you go from, where were you going from the village? I don't remember where we were going. I don't remember if we were going to figure out how to get money to get more drugs. I don't remember what we were doing. Okay. I don't remember why we left. Okay. So that uh, if this were true, then Adam would be driving around with a critically injured child in the back seat in public. Right. And it would have been a pretty important place to have to go for him to take that sort of risk of driving around with a critically injured child in the back seat. He didn't care. Okay. And you did or did not? I felt like I had no say. Okay. Anytime I said something, I'd get yelled at. Okay. And then, uh, you say that at the intersection, by the way, what drugs did you do that day? I remember doing heroin or fentanyl. Okay. Not crack. I don't remember if we did that or not. Okay. So when you said on direct that it was uh, heroin and crack, that's not what you recall. I don't remember doing both or not. But you do recall heroin and fentanyl? Yes. Okay. And So uh, we discussed timing with the Colonial at 7 and then um, the breakdown late morning, right? Yes. So you were at the Colonial for a few hours. We are at the clinic at 7. And then Burger King and then the Colonial. Yes. And so you were at the Colonial parking lot for a few hours or a couple of hours before you left for wherever it was you were going. I don't think we were there that long. Do you recall breaking, well, the tow truck driver, do you recall going back to the intersection and the tow truck driver was there? You're talking about after the car broke down? Uh-huh. Yes, I remember when we got brought back. Okay. And that was like after 12.30 or so, right? Yeah, something like that. And how long did it take you to walk to uh, Mr. Badero's from the car? I don't know. It felt like a long walk. I don't remember how long. Okay. Okay. Uh...
So, uh, let's see. In that time that you were in the colonial parking area on the 6th prior to the car breaking down, Harmony was in the car, but she was dead, right? No. Is this? Yes. Sorry, Harmony was on the 7th, between your 7 o'clock uh, session at the clinic, dosage at the clinic, to Burger King, to the parking lot, to using drugs, to late morning driving away. Yes. Harmony was dead in the car, right? Not throughout that whole time. Pardon? Not throughout the whole time. She was actually in the trunk of the car, right? What? Were you and Adam planning or trying to figure out what you could do with Harmony because she had died? No, that didn't happen yet. Okay, okay. So, uh... That didn't even make any sense. Somewhere important, you had to go with Harmony in the car. And uh, you break down at the intersection, right? The car does. I didn't does. have anywhere important to go. Okay. So at the intersection, there's Webster and Elm Street, right? Yes. Elm Street is a big road, four lane? Yes. Four lane in the sense that it has turning lanes, right? Yes. And Webster is smaller, two lane. Well, it was just, it was still two lanes where we were. Yeah, yeah. and then it changes. Um, and so you were on Webster getting ready to get onto Elm Street. Uh, I don't remember which way we were going. But I knew we were at the light, at the light, first car at the light. So you don't know if you were in the four lane part or the two lane part of Elm Street or the two lane part of Webster? We were right on Webster at the light. Okay. And um, the light turns green and the car doesn't go. Right. And uh, there are cars around you. Yes. Honking. Yes. Looking at you. No, they were just figuring out why the car was there. They were, we had to keep telling them to drive around. Okay. So you and um, Adam are sort of waving them around? Yes. Or you're waving them around? I was waving them around to go around the car. Okay. And uh, Adam, I think you said, got the duffel bag out of the trunk? Yes. Because the duffel bag was in the trunk, right? Yes. But Harmony's body was in that duffel bag already. No. Overruled. You tell Adam, well, I think, Adam asked you what to do, right? Yes. This is a pretty bad situation, right? Right. With Harmony in the car like she was? Yes. And Adam asks you what to do. Right. And you tell him that you should... Oh, just, yes.
So you tell Adam that sustained. Well, approach if you want to approach. And at that intersection, um, you all uh, pack up and go to Badero's, right? Right. And that was your idea? No. It wasn't? No. Um, I'm going to refer you to, uh, I'm going to approach first, Your Honor. I'm going to show you a copy of the transcript of your June 3rd interview. I'm going to move this clip a bit because it might be hidden if I had to. And ask you again to review a portion of it. And I'm going to ask you a question. And that is the area. Page 50 for the record. You told Adam that you should go to Badero's, right? I asked him if we should. Okay. So it was your idea. Right? Yeah. And you gathered... Adam grabbed a duffel bag from the trunk. Yes. Uh, you got your purse and stuff from the trunk? No, my purse was not in the trunk. Okay. So you got your purse and you got some stuff in the trunk. <coughs> Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You uh, got some diapers for the kids? Yes. And you couldn't take too much with you because you were walking with all the kids to Mr. Badero's. Right. 
and you can't wait around for any kind of help because you have to get Harmony's body away from that car as soon as you can. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to talk to you about discovering that Harmony was dead. I think on direct you said that Adam opened the door and said something like, uh, baby girl, wake up, or wake up, baby girl. Yes. And uh, she wasn't moving. Right. And that's when uh, he popped open the trunk, you said. The trunk wouldn't open. It did eventually, though, right? He went, we moved the car seat out of the car so that he could move the seat to get into the trunk. Okay. And um, Adam checked her breathing. He was just trying to wake her and she wouldn't wake up. Okay. Do you remember Adam saying that Adam put a, uh, his hand over her heart? No. And uh, so that didn't happen? You don't have a recollection of Adam putting his hand over her heart? No, I don't. Okay. But you did tell the police that in June of 23rd that he put his hand over her heart to check her. He was checking her, but she wasn't waking up. Okay, so he did put his hand over her heart to check her. He tried waking her up. I don't remember the hand on the heart. Okay. Do you remember telling the police on June of 2023 that he checked her breathing and like put his hand on her heart? No. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Copy of that same transcript, okay? And ask you to review uh, that paragraph there, okay? I still don't remember that, but I can see that I said that, but I don't remember it happening. Okay. But what you told the police back in June of 2023, you were telling them as if it was a memory, right? Right. So either it wasn't a memory or that memory is gone. I don't remember. And you also checked Harmony, and she wasn't breathing. Right. Uh, you checked her neck, and you checked her wrists. Yeah. And you were looking for a pulse. Yeah. Must have been panicking. Yeah. Uh, did you do that before or after you were waving cars around? After. Okay. So, uh... After you have checked Harmony, you're saying that you went to the back of the car and you're sort of moving, uh, waving cars around to get them around your car. Yeah. Okay. And how long did you do that? Until we got the stuff out of the car that we needed to get out. Okay, so are you doing that while Adam is getting stuff out of the car? No, we're both on other each side of the car doing the same thing, trying to get stuff out. Which side of the car were you on? I don't remember. Okay. 
and you claim that uh, as these cars are going around and beeping and everything that Adam put Harmony into a duffel bag. Yes. And um, the four of you walked to Colonial Village. Right. Now, on direct, you said that you never saw Harmony bleed. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. Did you ever see blood on her? Not that I remember. Okay. And uh, you, were, you told the police that while Adam was throwing stuff in the back and cleaning the car, that, uh, well, you told the police that Adam was putting stuff in the bag and cleaning the car, right? After. After what? After we got to Anthony's and he brought us back to the car to get stuff out. Uh-huh. And he cleaned it. Okay. Uh, and you said that he cleaned the back seat because he had blood on his hands from hitting Harmony. I don't remember. Yes? You were asked what Adam was cleaning, and you said that uh, the back seat because he had blood on his hands from hitting Harmony, right? I don't remember that day of him doing that. I just remember cleaning the car after. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you the questions, and then we'll do some more. Um, you said that uh, Harmony had a bloody nose, and he had blood on his hands from hitting her, and he was wiping the seat with a napkin, right? Overruled. I don't remember it that day that she passed away that that was happening. Okay. And um, you were asked if Badero said anything about Adam's bloody hand, right? Not that day. Okay, I'll go through. Um, and you said no, he had already cleaned up his hands because that event, the bloody nose thing, happened days before, right? Right. And uh, you were asked more about whether Harmony had blood on her, fa on her that day. Right. And you said you saw dried blood on her face, right? Right. And you said that uh, that was the day the car broke down that you saw dried blood on her face. Right. Okay. So um, I'm going to go through the transcript and ask about some of those other things that you didn't remember and see if it refreshes your recollection. Okay. Approach.
show you. Again, it's that transcript from June 23rd. And ask you to review portions of that transcript. And I'm going to show you 229 uh, down to all of 229 and 230. Smith. Oh. That help refresh your recollection? Yeah. And so uh, you did tell the police that. Uh, Harmony had a bloody nose and had blood on it. He had blood on his hands and was wiping the seat with a napkin. Yeah, but that happened days before. That happened before she died. Sure, but the wiping was on uh, the uh, when the tow truck driver was there. Yeah, when we went back to the car. Okay. I remember cleaning. Okay. And it was for the blood that was on the car? I don't remember what it was for. Adam just wanted to clean it. Okay. But you recalled that uh, you did see blood, you said, on Harmony's face. Yeah. Right? And it was that day, right? Yes. And where you saw Adam cleaning was around the area that Harmony was sitting, right? Right. And you said that Adam had blood on his face that day? I mean, on his fist that day? Yeah, on his hand. And that Harmony had blood on her face? Dried blood, yeah. Right. But not from days before. Are you saying she had dried blood from days before? Yeah, she had dried blood on her face. From days before? Yeah. And you never cleaned her face for days? No, you just kept her under the blanket. Okay. Now you said yesterday, uh, Friday, that uh, you and Adam had talked about what to do together. Is that right? Do you remember that? Yes. And that you sort of came together with the plan to say that 
Adam had taken Harmony to her mother's. That's what Adam told me to say, yes. Okay. I am going to switch over now to when you go to fit, okay? Which time? With Adam, Declan, and Seamus. Okay. And the body of Harmony. Okay. And so uh, Adam no longer had a car after December 7th, right? Right. And uh, he no longer had the freedom to drive wherever he went, wanted to, right? Right. And uh, when he drove, there would be somebody else in the car, right? He would be driving someone else's car, right? right? And uh, sometimes he drove Badero's car, right? That was way before. Okay. Um, and you still didn't have any money, right? Right. And uh, from two days in Badero's car, uh, you go to your mother's. Right. And I think... You actually go to an aunt's or something, and uh, from there, your mother comes over and gets you off. Yes. And uh, you could only stay for a very limited time. Yes. She might get in trouble with her landlord. Yes. And so you were trying to get into the shelter. Yes. And you worked and applied and everything like that for the shelter. Yes. Would you walk over there to do that? Yes, we did. Okay. So you, Adam, and the kids would walk over to the shelter to apply for uh, shelter there? We walked to city welfare. Okay. And um, would you, Adam, and the kids be in the office all together making the application? When we filled out the application, yes. Okay. And then I saw the case manager. I don't remember if we were together or if it was just me. Okay. Uh, now, when you... Um, you told the jury that it fit. You had taken the duffel bag from the ceiling. Actually, no, it's a mistake. Okay. Overruled. I didn't realize I had said it. Adam took the duffel bag down from the ceiling, right? Yes. 
And Adam was the one that put the duffel bag in the ceiling in the first place, right? Yes. And um, you said that he took the duffel bag down from the ceiling and had it in the shower for hours. Had it in the bathroom, yes. Oh, was there a shower there? Yes. And did he have it in the shower for hours? I don't remember. Okay, okay. And um, from the bathroom, where did it go? To the closet. In what? Trash bag. Okay. And then what? CMC bag. Okay, so it went from the bathroom into a trash bag, one of those big black things? Yes. And from there, it goes into the closet. For how long? I don't know, a day or two. Okay. And there, the trash bag and Harmony's body is goes in the CMC bag? Yes. Okay. And... I think you identified uh, exhibit... 85 as pretty much a duplicate of the bag that you got when you from CMC right yes and this is a bag that's given when you give birth at CMC right yes and it's for diapers and carrying things around with for your children right yes diaper bag pardon diaper bag okay and uh, from the CMC bag with the trash bag and Harmony's body. Yes. Where does it go? To Portland Pie. Okay. And then where? To Union Street. How? In a tote. Okay. Where did it, from where to where did it go to Union Street? Where did it get in the tote? From the shelter. So how did it, the CMC bag get back to the shelter? It came back from Adam's work. Okay. To the shelter. Who brought it back? Adam. Okay, who brought it to uh, Portland Pie? I did. Okay. So, um, Are you saying that it's in the CMC, it, there's a body in a trash bag in the CMC bag in the tote? Not in the tote at the time. When you go to Union? When we go to Union, yes. Okay. And um, so you told... Okay, so you take the tote, you take the CMC bag, but not the tote, to Portland Pie. Not the plastic, right? I'm confused. So am I. I'll back <laughs> up. Sorry. To reorient ourselves, uh, at some point, you say that Adam takes the body down from the ceiling tiles. Yes. And it's because there's a smell. Yes. And it's because other people in FIT are concerned about the smell. Yes. And uh, you all are concerned that somebody might be checking the place to find out about the smell. Yes. Because you've heard the complaints. Yes. And you're scared. Yes. And I think you said uh, Adam takes the at Harmony's body down into the bathroom. Yes. And puts her, takes it, her body out of the duffel bag. Yes. And puts her body in a trash bag. Yes. And puts the trash bag in the closet. 
in the CMC bag in the closet. Okay. So from the bathroom, is her body put in the CMC bag? In the trash bag. The trash bag's in the CMC bag. And that all happens in the bathroom? Yes. And then... Um, You uh, said, I believe on direct, that Adam Tate tells you to take uh, the CMC bag to Portland Pie. Yes. Tell me about that. He had asked me to bring her body in the CMC bag to his work at Portland Pie. When? Uh, while we were at the shelter. Uh, was it uh, right after you say that he put the body in the CMC bag? Yes. So, like the next day? I don't remember what it, if it was the next day or a couple of days. Okay. And um, where was he when he did this? Was he in the shelter with you saying, bring this body to, to me? Yes. So, he's in the shelter with you and at some point goes to work? Yes. And has told you to bring this CMC bag to work? Yes. Why didn't he just take the CMC bag? I don't know. Okay. So you have um, two kids and a stroller, right? Yes. And so tell me about those arrangements, getting the C, and, and you take the C, all of that to Portland Pie? Yes. Tell me about how you did that. Um, it was a double stroller. So I had one kid in the front and there's a basket underneath and I put the CMC bag in the basket and then the other kid was on the other side, on the other seat. Okay, so you take the CMC bag out of the closet and put it on the stroller? Yes. And is that inside fit or outside fit that you loaded on the stroller? Inside. And then uh, you get your kids arranged yes. as well inside. Yes. And then you walk down uh, the street, and I think you said it took about 15 minutes or so? Yes. And you are walking with your children and the body of Harmony in a CMC bag to Portland Pie? Yes. And uh, why? Why was it going there? Did you know? He asked me to do it. Okay. And you didn't say anything, ask him why or anything? He said he was doing it so that the smell wouldn't be at the shelter. Okay. Um, did, did you tell him he should take it with him? No, he called me when he was at work and told me to bring it. Okay. So he didn't tell you to do that while he was at FIT. He, he said, was thinking about it, but I, wasn't, I didn't think he was really going to do that. Okay. So he mentioned it at FIT, but then calls you from Portland Pie and says, come on down. Yes. Okay. And um, then you have a place at Union Street, right? Yes. And um, somehow the body has returned to fit? Yes. Before you moved to Union Street? Yes. And you don't know how? Adam brought it back. Did you see him bring it back? I don't remember. Okay. Um, I don't remember if it came back. Yeah, because we had to bring it to the apartment. Okay, and you brought it? Uh the CMC bag in a plastic storage container, right? Yes. And um, you went to the Union Avenue apartment, and again, you have a stroller with your two children, two sons. Yes. And now it is a plastic container that is on the stroller. Yes. Okay. And it was in a plastic container on the stroller when you went to Portland Pie? No. Okay.
And when you got to Portland Pie, um, you and Adam or Adam put the body in a refrigerator. It was his job. Okay. So he did. That was his job. It was his to job handle. was at Portland Pie. Okay. So he took the CMC bag inside, and he said he put it in the freezer. I'm sorry. I was. I meant to be asking about Union Street, and I know that I misstate sometimes. So at Union Street, um, you're on a second floor. Yes. And uh, you sign the lease and everything like that. And um, Adam brings the body upstairs. Yes. And uh, the CMC bag is put in the refrigerator. It's in the tote. Okay. When we was when we were walking to the Union Street, the bag was in the tote. He brought the tote upstairs and put it in the closet. Okay. And um, from the closet, it went to the refrigerator. Yes. Okay. Earlier, before I was uh, specifically going over your activities at FIT and um, Union and Portland Pie, I had talked to you about a conversation that you had with Detective Dunleavy after the June 3rd interview, right? Yes. And you said that you had gone up to him and... Uh, said that uh, uh, you had forgotten to tell him during the June 3rd interview that you had taken the diaper bag from the freezer and walked with it in the stroller to meet Adam at the back of Portland Pie. Right. That's what you told Detective Dunleavy, right? Right. And that you said the bag was there for one to two weeks and then it was brought back to the Union Street apartment, right? Right. Okay. A little bit different from what you've just described, right? Right. But I remember bringing it to his job from the shelter. Okay. Counsel, you want to approach? As I said, I, I look for what we consider to be natural breaking points. This sounds like one of them. So we are going um, to break for lunch. So I'm going to ask you to come back in an hour. So come back at 1 o'clock, please. Uh, we'll start at about, hopefully, at about 5 after. I remind you, don't discuss the case with each other or with anybody else. Do not do any independent research. Make sure all your banners and notifications are turned off on your phones. Um, no independent research, all right? Thank you very much. We'll see you about 1 o'clock. I'll rise to the jury. Montgomery, you may step down. Uh, council approach.
ready to bring the witness back? Yes. The, the issue that I look, asked you to look at earlier. Oh, that's do you want to approach? Please ready? Please rise for the jurors. Please be seated. I'm going to go a little, <coughs> sorry, a little bit backwards from what we were talking about when we took the break and talk about the uh, order of the children in the car in the back seat. Um, Declan, I think you said, had a car seat? Yes. Seamus had a car seat? Yes. And Harmony would wear a seatbelt? Yes. And I think that you said earlier today, Declan was in the middle, Seamus was uh, on the driver's side, and Harmony was in the passenger side. Yes. In uh, May 16, of well actually uh, in June of 2023 uh, you described uh, Harmony in the back seat after Burger King leaning on Seamus's uh, seat yeah she was always leaning on one of the car seats Okay, and you said it was Seamus's. Okay, so I must have it mixed up. I don't remember. I always thought Declan was in the middle. Okay. If you told them on the 23rd that it was, uh, June 23rd, that it was a Seamus, it could have been. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, when you were on May... 16, 2023, um, you were talking about feeding the children, and you said Declan couldn't eat yet because he was an infant, but I gave Seamus a little piece at the time he was in the middle. Is that right? Yes. And that was as if it was a memory, that you were speaking from memory. Yes. And uh, do you recall, because you talked about feeding Declan and putting the uh, pieces in his mouth. Do you recall if you did that? I remember feeding one of them, both of them, I don't know. Okay. And um, you talked about putting a sandwich on uh, Harmony's lap, but not looking at her, right? Right. Um, but you saw that she had a blanket on her lap, right? Yeah, she always had a blanket on her. And it was on her lap, you described it, right? Yes. Not over her, it was on her lap. Right. And uh, that you were 
uh, not looking, but you were sitting and just handing stuff back. Right. Okay. So a couple of things on Union Avenue and what you described at Union Avenue. Um, I think that you described the tote was in the, not the tote, the plastic thing with the tote inside, was in the closet and then the tote was put in the refrigerator. The bag was in the tote in the closet, then the bag ended up in the refrigerator. CMC bag. Yes. Yeah. And it was in the refrigerator for a bit until uh, it was taken out uh, to go into the bathtub. Yes. And after uh, it was in the bathtub, it went in the freezer. Yes. Okay. And you talked about events in the freezer. I mean, in the shower. And uh, described for the jury uh, lime. Yes. And that lime was used in the sh shower. No. Did you say that lime was put in a bag yes so that was on the floor of the bathroom is that what yes. you're saying and um, why lime Adam got the lime I don't know where it came from okay did you all research lime and what it might do I did not okay um, not like anything was dissolving in the shower or anything right with the lime it the wasn't in the bathroom it wasn't used in the shower okay but nothing was dissolving or anything with lime right I don't I have no idea you were in there not the whole time okay you said that uh, lime was put in a bag and then Harmony's body was put in a bag. You didn't see any reaction of her body to the lime, right? No. Nothing changed. I right? didn't see her body getting put in the bag with the lime. Adam said that he was going to be putting her body in the lime, in the bag that has the lime in it. Okay. Okay. Um... And you talked on direct about a tool. Do you remember that? Yes. And um, when you first spoke to the police, you told them that scissors were the only tool used in the shower, right? From what I remember, yes. Okay. And the scissors were used to um, cut clothes off of Harmony. Yes. And you used the scissors. Yes. And you cut off Harmony's hoodie. Yes. And you're saying Adam used the scissors. Yes. And cut off her leggings. Yes. And um, those were the only tools in the bathroom, right? That I saw, yes. How big is the bathroom? The bathroom wasn't that big. Okay. You saw the things that were in the bathroom, right? Yes. And you claim to have seen a bag of lime in the bathroom, right? Yes. You didn't see any tools, right? No. I saw a bag of lime and trash bags. Okay. And there weren't any tools sitting outside the bathroom, right? No. Okay. And uh, you didn't hear any power saws? No, because it was really loud. What was really loud? Our neighbor next door was a drunk, 
and very loud, always blasting his music. Okay. And you think that the music could have overcome power tools if they were used? I believe so, yeah. It was very loud all the time. Okay. And um, when you first talked to the police, you actually denied that you helped Adam in the bathroom, right? Right. And you denied that you had anything to do with what he did in the bathroom. Right. You said that Adam didn't want you in the bathroom. Right. And then when you had to admit that you were in the bathroom, uh, you ended up admitting that you cut off the hoodie, right? Right. And you... Uh, ended up admitting that you were uh, zipping up the bag. Yes. At the end. Yes. So you were in the bathroom for a while. No. For a few times. Like a couple times, yes. Okay. And otherwise, the shower was going. Yes. And so presumably the water is doing something. Yes. And a bag of lime on the floor in the bathroom would generally not be touched by a shower that's in the tub, right? No, it was in the corner of the bathroom. Okay, away from the tub. Yes. Okay. But the shower, I think you said, was going continuously. Yes. The whole time. Yes. And you could hear that. That's what I saw saw or heard I saw I couldn't hear it but I saw and you saw it going the whole time not the whole time but I assumed the whole time okay okay because he told me what he was doing okay and you and Adam were working together to take the clothes off of Harmony yes. and put her in the bag I didn't put her in the bag you zipped up the bag he needed help zipping up the bag. I was there in the beginning, and I was there in the end. Excuse me. Sir, you need to step out or turn the pager off. Okay, please step out. Thank you. You would re-ask your question, Attorney Smith. what it was okay. so what you're saying now is uh, you didn't know if the shower is going the whole time no okay now you um, didn't know if Adam used any tools in the shower because you weren't there the whole time right but you never saw any no. And the police specifically asked you about tools? Yes. And specific types of tools, right? Yes. And you told them that the only tool that Adam had was a box, a big box under the counter in the kitchen. Yeah. And that when he pulled out that box one time when he was <clears throat> losing it, he broke the counter. Yes. And it was a pretty big box, right? Yes. And you did not see any other power tools in the uh, apartment? No. Before or since? I'm sorry? Before that day or after that day? No. Okay. And um, they actually showed you pictures of uh, power tools. Yes. To ask you about those power tools. Yes. And um, did they show you a picture of a big table saw? Yes. And that wasn't, that was or was not similar to what you had seen in the apartment? It was similar to it. Okay. I'm going to show you a picture. Be right back. 
recognize this picture? Yes. And is that what you're saying? Well, what is, how do you recognize this picture? It's a table saw. Uh-huh. And was that the uh, type of tool that you had seen in the apartment? Yeah, there was a table saw in the box. Okay. And I'm going to... ask that this page be marked as an exhibit, Your Honor? It's not. It's free mark. Attorney Smith, for identification or full? Full. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right. It can be marked as a full exhibit. And they also showed you a circular, a picture of a circular saw, right? I don't know the difference. Okay, I'm going to show you another picture. And ask you if you recognize that, what's in that picture. Yeah, that's what it looked. Pardon? That looked more like what it was than that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, you actually uh, told uh, the detective that uh, it looked like the cordless compact circular saw. No, it wasn't cordless. Okay. You say it had a cord. Yes. Okay. And, Your Honor, uh, I'm sorry, I did not have this pre-marked. I would like this offered as a full exhibit. Okay. To be entered as a full exhibit. Thank you. And this is... Thank you. And do you remember the detective saying out loud that, uh, did it look like the cordless compact circular saw? And you said, yeah. No. Okay. Got a copy of Defendant's Exhibit E for ID. And I'm gonna, <clears throat> gonna ask you to, again, look wherever you want. Let me put this in an easier position. But read that portion at least. Yeah, it wasn't cordless. Okay, but the photograph that uh, the detective had showed you was, uh, as he said, of a cordless compact circular saw, right? Right. And the photograph that's been marked as I is in, at least indicates it's a cordless compact circular saw or cordless circular saw. Yeah, that's what it says, but it wasn't cordless, the one that was in the house, the okay. apartment. But that was the one that it looked like? Yeah. Okay.
And then uh, Detective Dunleavy showed you another photograph and asked if that perhaps looked like the tool under the sink. That one? No, a different one. I don't know. Uh, do you recall him showing you a picture of a miter saw? I don't even know what that is. Okay. Um, we'll get there. Okay. So, earlier in direct, you uh, were given a picture of a power tool, right? Yeah. And you had signed that photograph, right? Right. Or, I'm sorry, initialed it, right? Yeah. Do you know when you initialed it? <clears throat> um, no. Pardon? No. Was it recent or a long time ago? I know I did some recent and I did some a long time ago, so I don't remember. You signed um, some photographs recently and signed some a long time ago? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you. And I keep saying sign and I'm misstating. You initialed, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 63. For identification or full? It's been in as full. That was recent. This you yes. signed recently? Yes. In one of those prep sessions? Yes. And um, back in May, March 16, 2023, you did not sign uh, exhibit 63 as the tool that you had seen, right? Right. And if I may publish, Your Honor. And the name of the type of saw on that photograph that you recently signed was M18 Fuel 18 Volt Lithium Ion Brushless Cordless uh, Size Grinder with Paddle Switch Tool Only. Okay. Yes. But back in March of 2023, when you were shown photographs, you identified the one that looked most like the tool as the cordless circular saw, right? I'll show you uh, Defendant's Exhibit I. I don't get what you're trying to say. This cordless circular saw photograph was the one that you identified most like the tool that was under the counter. Yes. Okay. If I may, Your Honor? Yep. What happened? What was the exchange where you initialed it? Because my mom had a similar tool just like that one. Adam asked to take it, and I said, no, you're not taking it. It's my mother's. Okay. And he wanted to take it, and I don't remember if he took it or not because he would have did it behind my back. Okay. And um, there were never any new tools in the apartment, right? Not that I knew of. And uh, you didn't see any new tools uh, around the time that you're talking about the things that you and Adam did in the shower. 
Right, but I he also brought lime and whatever else into the apartment, and I had no idea. Okay. And you also talked to the uh, prosecutor uh, about tools in your prep session, right? Right. And in that prep session, you said you didn't know of any tools, but Adam said he wanted to, right? Yes. And that came in the most recent prep sessions that Adam told you he wanted to use tools. Right. And you didn't say when they were asking you about tools in uh, June 3rd or June 23rd, you didn't see any tools, but Adam wanted to use tools, right? Right. And you didn't say in March 16 of 2023 that you didn't see tools. There was an old thing that looked kind of like the circular saw, but Adam said he wanted to use tools, right? right. And um, when you're prepping for your testimony here, I think that you said your parole hearing was coming up in May? I don't know about my hearing. I know my minimum is in May. Okay, and so you are hoping for a parole hearing and to get out in May, right? Yeah. But it's not guaranteed, right? No. Okay. And uh, on that time where the uh, state had you initial that uh, fuel grinder, um, did they show you the picture and say, have you ever seen this? Yes. And you said, yeah, my mom has one. I said, yes, my mom had one. I saw that she had one of those. Okay. And when they showed you this picture that you thought might, it might be important to the case, right? Because Adam asked to take it and okay. I told him not to. Okay. And that's a real clear memory, right? Right. And it's something that you never mentioned in 20, in June or March 22, 23, right? Because it didn't get brought up. I wasn't thinking about that. Well, they were asking about tools, weren't they? Yeah, but I wasn't thinking about tools that my mom had. I wasn't remembering that Adam wanted to take that. Okay. Okay. Um, and what was that tool? Did you remember what it was? A handsaw. Okay. That's what I call it anyway. Okay. And uh, what were the circumstances that you saw it at your mom's place? Because my mother works with wood. She has her own refurbishing uh -huh. um, company, and she does her own woodwork. Okay. And okay. she just got it. It was brand new in okay. the box. Okay. Um, so if it was brand new and purchased, it was brand new in December of 2021. Yes. Okay. showed you uh, photograph of the CMC bag when you were doing the interview in June of 2023, right? Yes. And uh, you identified that as the same type of bag, the same as the one that you got from Catholic Medical Center when you had your child. Yes. And you actually thought that it was your bag. Right. You thought they had found the bag. Yeah. And you had thought that because you recognized this little spot yeah. in the photograph. I may publish, Your Honor.
talk about what you've described as the treatment of that CMC bag. Uh, you say that a body, I'm sorry, Harmony's body was taken down from the ceiling at FIT and put into uh, the shower at FIT. Yes. And put into a trash bag and into the CMC bag. Yes. And that that body stayed in the uh, CMC bag for a while? Yes. And then you took the CMC bag uh, down the street to Portland Pie? Yes. And then the CMC bag came back to... And that um, Harmony's body was in the closet in that bag at Union, right? Yes. And that uh, then it was in the Harmony's body was in the refrigerator in that bag. Yes. And then Harmony's body was in the bathroom with uh, water running and her body and lime and all that stuff in that bag. Yes. And then in the freezer. Yes and then uh, taken away. Yes. And you believed that this bag was the same bag. Yes. Because of that little dot there. Yes. Because the last time you saw the bag, that was the only stain on the bag. or something Not the like only it. stain, but that was a stain that would not go away. Ah, did you wash the bag? No, but I tried getting it off. How? By rubbing it off. Okay. Wiping it. Pardon? Wiping it. Okay. Okay. Um, now, after the uh, thing in the shower, um, Adam became pretty despondent, right? What does that mean? Uh hurt inside. Yeah. And you said that he tried to kill himself. Yeah. And you told him that he had to uh, live and be there for the kids. Right. And that uh, the kids need him and you needed him and he shouldn't do it. Yes. And Jesus? Without your, if I may rephrase, Your Honor. Oh, you may rephrase. The question is withdrawn. The objection is sustained. Without saying exactly what you said, um, you tried to uh, talk about your lives together to give him something to live for. Yes. Okay. And the main focus of that was the kids. Yes. Okay. The um, completely changing the subject, I want to take you back to uh, the summer of 2019, and you testified about um, Kevin and Adam having an argument and you overhearing it. Yes. And the argument was about Kevin Montgomery's failure to pay bills that he had promised to pay, right? Part of it, yeah. Okay. Uh, you all were kind of left in the lurch because those bills weren't paid, right? Yes. Okay. I may have a moment, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Jones, when you're ready. If I may just have a moment. Knowles, I need you to have a microphone there, so I don't know if you... <coughs> Thank you. Whenever you're ready. Thank you. So, Kayla, you just said that, that part of that argument was about failure to pay bills. Can you tell the jurors what the other part of that argument was about? was about Adam hitting Harmony. It was about me, sorry? Adam hitting Harmony. Okay. And this bag that you have identified? Yes. Is it similar? Is it identical to the one that, that was brought to the Econo Lodge? Yes. Is it identical to the one that, that Adam left in the new hallway? Yes. And the stains that you mentioned? When did they make it onto that bag? Um, before we left Guilford Street. Before you left Guilford Street? Yes. And so that would have been before Harmony's body was ever placed in the bag? Yes. Before the defendant murdered Harmony? Yes. Before he beat her to death in that parking lot? Objection. Yes. Was Sustained. That and you're referring to Judge. Was that before he beat her to death in the parking lot? Yes. Attorney Smith just showed you several items, saws. And I want to be very clear. The saw in my right hand was what the defendant discussed. Objection. Meeting. Sustained. Foundational question. Did he testify and direct that the saw in my right hand was the one that the defendant used to discussed using to dismember Harmony? Yes. Did he say that on direct? Because that's in fact what he did. He discussed using this to dismember Harmony. Yes, he did. And the saw on my left hand that the defense attorney showed you just now, was this similar to the item that was under uh, your countertop? Yes. Attorney Smith asked you, she asked you about if that's when, when the defendant was losing it. What, what does losing it mean to you? Was that when he was hitting you? Was that something else? Everything. He was abusive. He, in all ways, physical, emotional, and mentally. You said physical, you said emotional, and you said mentally. Yes. And let's unpack that. How is he physical with you? How is he physically abusive towards you in that period before you escaped him? Uh, he thought that I was telling on him or cheating on him or trying to kill him. Okay. And how is he physical with you in those interactions? He wanted me to tell him who I was cheating on him with or if I was working with the cops and I kept saying that I didn't and he kept hitting me anyway and then I started telling him that I did even though I wasn't and he still kept hitting me anyway. And let's talk about that. Why would you tell him that you were doing these things, working with the police? To, to, why would you tell him that, even though you weren't at the time? 
so that I wouldn't get hit. Did he still hit you? Yes. You said that he was emotionally abusive to you. Tell the jurors about that. Because he'd go back and forth with telling me to tell him that I was working with the cops and he would accuse me of sleeping with the guy downstairs, sleeping with all these different people, that I came out of the window one night, I couldn't take care of the kids. He wouldn't let me do anything without him being there. You said that he was mentally abusive to you. Can you tell the jurors how? By asking me if I was working with the cops and making sure that I stuck with the story that he brought me to work and dropped me <laughs> off and was bringing her me to her mom. And can you tell us who, who came up with that story? <laughs> he did, Adam. And you stuck to it? Yeah. You stuck to it even though you knew you weren't working at the time. I'll rephrase. Did you stick to it even though you knew you weren't working at the time? Yes. Attorney Smith asked you about Adam being pure evil. Did you think that Adam was pure evil? When he would start going crazy, yeah. And you mentioned the evil eyes. When he looked at you in that moment, evil eyes, is that what you said? Yeah. And was that right after he'd beaten Harmony? Yeah, it just got worse. Were there also good times with the defendant in that period? Yeah. But it was mostly bad. And in those bad times, were you hoping for the good times? Yeah. Kayla, do you still love the defendant? I still care about him because he's the father of my children. He was my best friend. It's been hard for me to just let go. Kayla, I want to switch gears with you just a bit. You mentioned that after the defendant had, had beaten Harmony to death, after your car died at that intersection, after the defendant realized that Harmony was dead, that he, he got a duffel bag out of the trunk. And Attorney Smith asked you about him getting that duffel bag out of the trunk. And you said that the trunk would not open. Yeah. And he had to go in through the back seats. Yeah. Can you tell the jurors why the trunk wouldn't open? When the car died, nothing was electronic was working. The windows wouldn't go down. The car just stopped working. <coughs> Kayla, I'm going to switch gears with you again. Um, and I'm sorry to bounce around like this, but you talked about Mr. Badero, Anthony Badero, being a source of drugs, an occasional source of drugs. Yes. And Attorney Smith asked you about how these drugs would be purchased. Yes. And I believe the testimony that she asked you about was that sometimes you'd pay for them, sometimes he'd give them to you for free. Do you remember that line of questioning? Yes. Um, would Mr. Berdero also accept food stamps or, or SNAP as a form of payment for drugs? Yes. And when you were living in the car, is that a form of payment that he accepted? Yes. Did that lead to your family having to eat baby food as a result? Yes. Who was eating baby food while you were living in that car? All of us. Myself and the boys in Harmony. Attorney Smith asked you about trying to keep things quiet in the parking lot of the Colonial Village Apartments that morning around 2, 3 a.m. when you woke up and the defendant was beating Harmony, striking her blow after blow. 
and you talked about the children not screaming. Is that because at the same time he was telling them to shut the fuck up? I think that was your testimony on, on direct. Yes. Who was he telling to shut the fuck up? Harmony. And was that before, during, or after he was brutally beating her? Before and after. Attorney Smith uh, asked you several questions about Harmony, the changes that were happening to her. And she said that it was difficult for Harmony because of all the changes. And you agreed with that, but I, I want to ask you about that. Was it difficult for Harmony because of all the changes that she was going through? No, objection. I just finally finished the question, and then I'll rule on the objection. So Kayla, was it difficult for Harmony because of all the changes she was going through or because she was terrified of the defendant? Sustained. Let me rephrase the question. Kayla, was it difficult for Harmony because of her fear of the defendant? It's a direct question. It's not a leading question. So Kayla, was, was Harmony, was it because of all of these changes or was it for some other reason? Overruled. Or was it for some other reason? I think it was all of it. And let's talk about all of it. Can you tell the jurors, jurors what all of it is? Um, Adam being abusive, physically and mentally and everything she went through from her mom and her dad. And Kayla, when you say Adam being abusive, you're talking about the accidents that you would have. Yes. During your cross-examination, this was last week, the defense attorney said during her examination of you that, that Harmony died in the car with you, right? And you weren't ex able to explain the answer that you'd given. Who else was in the car with you, with Harmony, when Harmony died? Adam and the two boys. And who was striking her repeatedly right before she died? Adam. Are you aware that the defense argued in their opening that something happened to Harmony in the middle of the night um, and that, that that thing killed her um, before the defendant was even around? Right. So is that true? No. Did Harmony die in the middle of the night alone with you when the defendant wasn't even there? No. So when you testified during, your, during the defendant's examination that you thought Harmony was sleeping but then found out she was dead. Yes. Was that in the middle of the night or was that the next day after 
your car broke down. That was the next day. That was after the methadone clinic. Yes. Kayla, you were just asked, so you were asked last week, last Friday, about a letter that you'd written with various demands. Do you remember that? It's, it's the defense exhibit G. Yes. In that letter, you discuss betraying the defendant, and the attorney asked you if you wrote that, if you wrote betraying, but you weren't asked to explain what betraying meant. Can you tell the jurors what you meant when you said betraying? I felt like I was betraying him, Adam, by telling what happened to Harmony. And I was fighting with myself. Because I didn't want him to be mad at me for doing the right thing. Were you referring to the secret that you'd been keeping for two years? Yes. Were you telling, were you referring to telling the truth about him beating Harmony to death? I'll strike the question, Judge. Last week, you were asked to describe a conversation that, that you had with the defendant where he agreed to take the fall for Harmony's death, but you weren't asked to explain what that meant. What did you mean when you said take the fall or when he said take the fall? That he wants me with the children and no matter what happens, he's the one at fault. Was he, was he taking the fall for something that you did? No. Did you beat Harmony to death? No. Was he taking the fall for what he had done? Yes. You said that in the spring of 2020, the defendant was acting strange. He was accusing you of, what, of telling on him for what he'd done to Harmony. What did you mean when you said he was acting strange? Um, every time we got high, as soon as he got high, he started freaking out and just accused me of telling, working with the cops, thought there was cameras in the house, um, the TV, smashed every phone we had, just destroyed the whole apartment. When you were asked about lying to the grand jury, you said that, that he was stuck in your head. What did you mean by that? That I stick with the story that he told me to say. And that was stuck in your head during your testimony? Yes. I want to talk about that list of items that you gave, your, your requirements, your, um, the things that you'd like before testifying. Did you get immunity? No. Where are you currently living, Kayla? New Hampshire State Prison for Women. Kayla, did you get to keep your children? No. Do you have any rights to them? No. Are you even allowed to speak to them right now, Kayla? No. You said that after the defendant repeatedly struck Harmony, after he put the blanket over her, after she moaned, after the strange crying moaning stopped, after he did drugs, and after the car died, you thought that Harmony was asleep under that blanket. Yes. Why did you think that she may be sleeping after Adam repeatedly struck her? Because she usually just goes to sleep after. <laughs> Kayla, why stay with someone I stay with someone that does this to you? Because I was scared. And Why? I still cared about him. Why defend the person that does this to you? 
Because I was scared of what would happen. I didn't want anybody getting in trouble. Why stay with someone? Why stay with someone that does what you did to a helpless girl like this? Because <laughs> for some reason I still care about him. Why defend someone <laughs> that beat her to death? Attorney Smith asked you about a proffer agreement, your agreement to provide information about what the defendant had done, what had happened to Harmony. Do you remember that line of questioning? Yes. And she asked you about how none of those statements could be used against you. And yes. I think you agreed with that. Yes. So I'm going to ask you. showing you what's been marked as States Exhibit 102 for identification, and I'm just going to ask that you review that document. I don't know if that's when you're ready. Ella, is that the agreement as you remember it? Yes. And do you recognize any of the signatures on that final page? Yes. Which one do you recognize? Mine and my attorney and the AG. Is that the true and correct agreement? Yes. Your Honor, at this point I move to admit states, what's, what's marked for identification as states 102. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, the ID may be stricken and it'll be entered as a full exhibit. I'm going to take it back. Kayla, does that agreement discuss how your statements can be used against you? Yes. Tell the jurors how your statements can be used against you. If I lie. Does it say what other than your statements can be used against you if you lie? Um, I can get charged with anything. Does it discuss evidence related to, to Harmony, her body? Yes. 
can that information also be used against you? Yes. Now, is that the information that you went to that meeting with? Yes. And you knew about that before you testified yesterday and today? Yes. Kayla, do you, do you remember being, <clears throat> excuse me, do you remember being asked by the defense attorney last Friday about deciding to take an agreement with the prosecution? Yes. Do you remember Attorney Smith asking you the following question, the following questions and you providing the following answer? She said, but you knew you, you knew they had you solid on the perjury charges, right? Yes. And you said right to that. You were never getting around that one, <clears throat> Attorney Smith asked you. You were never getting around that one. Right. And so you decided this would probably be. Objection. Overruled. And so you decided this would probably be the best you could do to get as few consequences as you can as possible for your actions as possible, right? Do you remember being asked those questions? Yes. Because people facing criminal charges make strategic decisions to admit to some lesser offenses, to try to limit their legal exposure or get as few consequences for their legal, legal actions as possible, right? Right. Now, the defense asked you about that legal strategy. So you think that they would be aware of it, right? Yes. <clears throat> Are you aware that, that falsifying physical evidence, that abuse of a corpse, it's, it's lesser than murder? Yes. And are you aware that in their opening they told this jury that the state, that they can find the defendant guilty of falsifying an abuse of a corpse? Yes. Can you remind these jurors who killed Harmony? Adam Montgomery. If I can have just a moment. I'm sorry? How were you aware of what was said at openings? Um, I was told by my lawyer. Your lawyer told you what was said at opening? I believe so. I don't, I don't know. I'm not like here right now. Pardon? Can you rephrase the question, please?
Uh, this is a good time for us to take our mid-afternoon break, so I'm going to have you go back into the jury deliberation room. Don't discuss the evidence. Uh, no further conversations about this between each other or with anybody else. Don't do any independent research, uh, and we will have you, uh, we'll take at least 15 minutes, okay? All rise for the jurors, please. Council approach, you may be seated.
Can you get the lawyer's piece? Yeah, you can stay here. You can come on up. I'm just waiting for the lawyer.
bring in the jury. Counsel, uh, actually, never mind. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I do realize that was more than 15 minutes. Sometimes there are some issues that come up that the court has to deal with before we can bring you back in. We have dealt with that, and uh, the defense may proceed. When we took the break, you had indicated that you learned information about uh, what was said in opening statements by Adams' attorneys yes. about the case, right? Yes. And you were, I think the state asked, were you aware that he said something happened uh, in the night of December 6th to December 7th with you alone in the car? Yes. And he also said, were you aware that Adam was conceding that uh, he had um, been involved in the manipulation, well, the abuse of the court's charge. Yes. And the um, falsifying evidence charge. Yes. And you learned this the morning before you testified. Yes. And you learned this because your attorney spoke to you about it. Yes. Overruled. And uh, learning this allowed you to prepare for the answers that you would give. Yes. And you discussed the ways that you would deal with this information. Overruled. Mm, not really, no. Okay. You thought about this information and you knew that that was different from what you had told uh, police and the prosecutors before. Yes. And uh, you thought about this information and this pointed the finger at you, right? Yes. And you certainly didn't want to have the finger pointed at you, right? Right. And you wanted to uh, think about and prepare yourself for how you would respond to those questions. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. And And it was sort of like the prep stations with the state and with the police that you could think about things that had happened and maybe give a better or different explanation the next time you spoke to someone. I'm sorry, I'm not. Thank you. Yeah. When the police during your interviews raised questions or skepticism about um, information that you gave him, you'd sometimes change your uh, statements, right? Overruled. No. Well, when the police spoke to you in June 3rd, you said that you were not in the bathroom and that you um, were not involved with what happened in the shower when Harmony's body was at Union Avenue, right? Right. And then uh, the next time you talked to the police, 
Uh, you said you were a little bit aware, and then you slipped up and said something, and the police said, did you cut any cl the clothes off? And you said, yeah, the hoodie, right? That's not how that happened, but... Okay. Um, but you had denied anything, and then as time and their questioning went on, you acknowledged that you were a participant, right? Right. Okay. And um, you talked on direct about Adam losing it in uh, after Harmony's body was in the shower, right? Not that day, but yes. Okay, sometime after, right? Right. And that he was accusing you of cheating on him? Yeah. Accusing you of trying to kill him? Yes. Accusing you of having cameras all over the house? And other things, yes. And accusing you of blaming him for Harmony's death to the police? No accusing you of telling the police. Right, you already said that. Pardon? You already said that. Okay. So he was accusing you of telling the police that he had caused Harmony's death. Yes. And uh, accusing you of telling the police that you were trying to poison him. Yes. He was scared of you. No. Okay. And uh, none of that was true, right? What do you mean? You weren't cheating on him, right? Right. And you weren't trying to poison him. Right. And you weren't accusing him of Harmony's death. No. He had just sort of lost his mind for a while, right? Yes. And in that time period, he got violent. Yes. And you told the grand jury when you were talking about that time period that he punched you twice. I don't remember saying how many times, but yes. Or a couple of times? Yes. And that sounds right? Or do you want to see your grand jury testimony? No, I was going to say yes. Okay. And he punched you twice, and... Uh, Objection. Oh. The objection sustained. You told the grand jury he punched you twice or a couple of times, right? Right. And then in um, March, uh, this started to happen again, right? It never stopped. Okay. And you have a picture of, and I'm showing you States Exhibit 99, of you with redness along your eyes. Yes. Right? And this is a picture that you took of yourself and sent to other people, right? Right. Um, because you were angry at what he had done to you. I sent it to my own family. Okay. Yeah. Right. And you left him? Yes. But uh, he was the one that got arrested. Right. And you filed a restraining order on him. Yes. And uh, went back with your mother for a while? Yes. And went to the shelter for a while? Yes. And... Um, tried to get back with Adam. Yes. And you're saying it was not a couple of times in after uh, Harmony's body was taken away, it was constant. Yes. And then, um, you 
He had also, we talked about, become despondent and sort of suicidal. It happened twice, yes. She just said it happened oh. twice. Overruled. And you uh, took care of your kids, right? Yes. And took care of Adam. Yes. And continued on with your life. Yes. Okay. You said that uh, the state asked you about Adam being pure evil, right? Yes. And uh, that's what you said you saw in Adam at the time that uh, you say that he was beating Harmony. Yes. And. Um, you're saying that a child was beaten to death beside you, looking like pure evil, and you continued on with your children and your life with Adam. Yeah, but it wasn't okay. Okay. And you did nothing about Harmony's death. No, right? I asked him to stop, and he didn't. Okay. I'm talking about after Harmony was died, you continued on with your life, right? Yeah, but it wasn't okay. It was abusive. Okay. And um, you don't like that. Abusive, right? Right. And you would not approve of abusive behavior. Well, I was taking it. Okay. When I should enough, it took a while for me to just leave him. It's really hard. Okay. Um, now, the duffel bag in the trunk of the car, you eventually got the trunk open, right? No, we didn't get the trunk open. Well, you eventually got a bunch of stuff out of the trunk, right? Yes. And um, were you present when the Mr. Badero drove Adam back to the car? Yes, I was with him. And the kids were where? With us. Okay. And at that point, you were trying to get the rest of the stuff out of the car? Yes. And you were able to take some things out of the car? Yes. From the back seat? Yes. And from the trunk? Yes. And uh, let's talk about the letters talking about betrayal. You remember talking about that on redirect? Yes. Anyway, uh, those letters were the um, handwritten notes that were taken from yourself. Yes. Right? And uh, you are talking about betrayal of Adam because uh, you don't want to hurt Adam. Right. But I think you said on redirect, but you had to do the right thing. Right. And that's what you meant when you wrote the word betrayal was that you didn't want to hurt Adam, but you had to do the right thing. Right. And after you wrote that letter where you didn't want to hurt Adam, but you had to do the right thing, uh, you went and lied to the grand jury. When I was subpoenaed, yes. And that was after the letter about betrayal, right? A few months after, yes. And that was not doing the right thing, right? Right. Because you knew how Harmony died, right? Right. And you knew when she died, right? Right. And you knew where she died, right? Yes. And the right thing would have been to tell the grand jury that information, right? Right. And you did not do the right thing. Not yet. Okay. And then um, I think you said uh, 
that Adam and you talked about, I think you called it Take the Fall, because he wanted you to be with the children. Yes. So Adam agreed to take the fall for uh, what happened to Harmony to protect you. No, not just to protect me. To protect you being there for the children. Yeah. Okay. And he said if anything happens, he would take the fall. Right. And you expected that he would do that, right? No. You didn't expect that he would do that? No. Okay. But he did, right? No. Ah, okay. Uh, sorry. Um, he took the fall in the sense that both of you represented to other people that he had taken Harmony to Crystal. Right. Okay. So he was allowing him to be the focus of anybody's questions, not you, right? Right. And you said that uh, you um, said that uh, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, that you stuck with the story even though you didn't work at Dunkin' Donuts on the 30th, right? Right. And um, I think you said that Adam said make it sometime around Thanksgiving, right? No. The story about him going uh, with Harmony off to Crystal. And yeah, because we got kicked out of uh, the house, but that was, it was just that time. Okay. And you were the one that picked the date that you would say that you were working at Dunkin' Donuts, right? I don't remember that. Okay. Well, you said that you continued with her, her, your story even though you knew you didn't work that day, right? Right. And you continued with the story because in the middle of grand jury, you learned that they had gotten the Dunkin' Donuts records, right? Yeah. And um, you continued with the story because you didn't, weren't prepared to say anything else. I didn't want to say the other issue of what happened. Okay. And you had been advised prior to the grand jury testimony, those ground rules were saying every time that you lie, um, if it's, you might get stacked charges, right? Yeah. And one thing that has been the focus of everything that you have done since being arrested is to be in as little trouble as possible, right? I'm sorry. You have said things to try and get out of trouble or keep the trouble as little as possible, right? No. Yeah. Well, when they continued asking questions, you could have asked to see your lawyer, right? Right. But you continued with the story, right? Right. Because you didn't have another one to say. Because that's what Adam told me to say. I didn't know what else I was going to say. I just stuck with the story. Okay. So you didn't know what else to say, so you stuck with the story, right? Right. And... Um, you had talked before about betraying Adam, but weren't ready at the grand jury. Right. Okay. And uh, and you said that you were afraid to do anything because you were afraid of what would happen, right? Right. And I think one of the things that you told the state that you were afraid of what would happen was that uh, Adam threatened to have Kevin kill you? Yeah. Okay. Kevin is the uncle that used to live in the 77 Guilford Avenue, right? Yes. And the one that was in that fight with Adam... Uh, that you said that you overheard in the summer. 
Yes. Okay. State talk to you about your cooperation agreement that you reached before um, talking to the police about what happened that you said happened to Harmony, right? Right. And um, one of the things that it said was that your statements couldn't be used against you, right? Right. And that they wanted the truth. Right? right, and you told them when you first uh, spoke after having this agreement that you never, you did not go into the shower at Union Avenue when you, Adam was manipulating the body, right? Right, Pardon? right. And that was not the truth, right? No. And um, you didn't get in any trouble for it, right? Right. You just changed your testimony. Right? Right. <coughs> Basis? She didn't testify the wrong. That's what it was. Oh, rephrase. Okay. Your statement, right? Right. And as time went <coughs> on and they would approach you with things, you might adjust your statement to fit uh, some of the questions, right? Right. Okay. And by that agreement, you were supposed to only tell the truth, right? Right. And your story changed somewhat, right? Right. And at the grand jury, you were only supposed to tell the truth, right? Right. And you lied. Right. Nothing further, Your Honor. Anything further from the state? Um, Your Honor, no further questions for Ms. McCormick. All right, you may sit down. Let me call us next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, at this time the state calls Ms. Courtney Garcia to the stand. Mr. Garcia, if you would please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony that you will give this jury will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Please feel free to have a seat. Thank you. And uh, feel free to pour yourself a glass of water if you'd like for any reason. Okay. Uh, Ms. Garcia, as we're being recorded here today, would you please state your full name and spell both your first and your last name for the record? Yes. My name is Courtney Garcia, C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y. G-A-R-C-I-A. -A. Okay, thank you. And um, what city do you live in? Manchester, New Hampshire. How long have you lived here? About five years. Okay. And uh, are you currently employed? 
not the moment. Okay. Um, what kind of jobs have you had in your life? Um, I've had some supervisor positions. I've worked as a counselor in the addiction field, restaurant jobs. Okay. And um, currently, right now, do you have any children? I do. Okay. How old? 13 months. It sounds like a handful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let me ask you, with regards to the name Adam Montgomery, have you heard that name before? Yes. All right. How do you know Adam Montgomery? He is a childhood friend of my husband. Okay. And what's your husband's name? Matthew Garcia. Um, with regards to Adam Montgomery, have you met him in person before? I have. Okay. And also, uh, at any point in time, um, were the two of you working together? Yes. He was one of my employees. Okay. Report to the witness, please, Your Honor. Ms. Garcia, I'd like to show you what's been marked State's Exhibit 101. Uh, do you recognize that person? Yes, that's Adam Montgomery. That's Adam Montgomery. The same Adam Montgomery that we're talking about? Yes. Um, I'd like to ask you very specifically about Mr. Montgomery. I'd like to ask about Thanksgiving of 2019, if I can. Okay. Um, did you see Mr. Montgomery on Thanksgiving of 2019 or around that time? I did, on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving Day? Yes. Okay. It was in the evening. I'm sorry, in the evening? Yes. Okay. Um, and I would ask if you can just kind of scoot a little bit more forward, actually. You saw him in the evening, right? Correct. And when you saw him in the evening, let me ask, did you become aware of where he was living at the time? Yes, I did. He was living in his vehicle. What did the car look like? It was a Chrysler Sebring, very bald tires, um, silver to my knowledge. And where did you see him that evening? I saw him at the Pestataquag, I think that's how you pronounce it, apartments in Manchester, New Hampshire, in the parking lot. Okay. Um, what, if anything, did you do for him that day? Uh, my husband and I pro provided Adam gas money, and we offered him a place to stay. Okay. Um, and that was on Thanksgiving, correct? Correct. All right. And what did uh, what did Mr. Montgomery say to that when you offered him a place to stay that night? regards to Thanksgiving and staying, what did the defendant say when you made that offer? Uh, Adam was kind of for it, but Kaylin and Adam ended up um, 
not agreeing to stay at our location. Okay. And let me ask you, is that a conversation that you directly had with the defendant? Yes. And I believe a second ago you just said also Kayla. So, Kayla, is that Kayla Montgomery? Yes. Um, that particular day, uh, did you see any other members of the family there? Yes, they had their two sons and um, Harmony in the back seat. Okay. And how did, did you see her in person in the back seat, or did you just know that she was there? I just know that all three children were there. None of the children got out of the vehicle. Okay. Did you look into the vehicle at any point to put eyes on them? Uh, we offered them food, so um, I believe at one time I kind of put my hand in, and that was that. I didn't, I didn't really look at the children so what I was there for okay and from your recollection today how many children were in the car at that time three All right, thank you uh, moving forward from Thanksgiving I want to talk to you about the couple of months after that did you see the defendant again uh, Adam Montgomery um, sometime between December and January December of 2019 into January of 2020 multiple times okay and at any point in at any point in time during that month December going into January did you have a conversation with him about Harmony and her condition we did yes or I did yes okay um, uh, where did the defendant where did Mr. Montgomery say she was at that point uh, he told us that he brought Harmony back to uh, her mother uh, do you know what her mother's name is uh, Crystal maybe okay and let me ask with regards to that I apologize did the defendant ever tell you what her name is I no. should have asked a better question there no okay. he, didn't. he did not and with regards to how she w was back with her mother, what did the defendant tell you about why that happened or how it happened or when it happened? He told us that he brought her back to her mother because Harmony was having multiple accidents in the vehicle. And by accidents, what do you mean by accidents? Uh, she was using the bathroom in the vehicle. Okay. Um, did, what, if anything, did the defendant say about Harmony now being with her mother as compared to Harmony being with Adam? I'm sorry, not. Sure. Um, at any point in time, did he talk about um, what kind of, with regards to what Harmony was being provided for, what she could be provided for from her mother as compared to what Adam was able to offer at that time? A home. A home? Yes. Just a moment, please, Your Honor. Let me ask you, Ms. Garcia, at one point, uh, were you interviewed by uh, officers of the Manchester Police Department about this interaction that we talked about today that was, you had yes. with Adam Montgomery? Yes. Okay. And during the time that you were speaking with them, did you tell them that the defendant told you that she was better off with her mother than with okay. him at the time? Basis? Per se. The, I'm sorry, the defendant. Yes, I'm asking whether or not she reported those as the defendant's words at that time. The objection is overruled. Go ahead, Ms. Garcia. Yes, he told us that she was better off with her mother because she could provide her a home. Adam could not. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Garcia. I don't have any further questions for you. I believe defense counsel will have a few. Okay. Hi, Ms. Garcia. You indicated on direct examination that uh, a place to stay was offered for the night? Correct. Adam was kind of for it? Yes. Kayla wasn't? Correct. Thank you. Anything further, Attorney Gotti? Nothing else we'd ask this witness to be excused. Any objection? No objection. You may step down. You are excused. Thank you. Just a brief moment. Your Honor, at this time, the state would call Ms. Kimberly Frame to the stand.
that the testimony you give this jury will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Thank you. Please feel free to have a seat. Uh, Ms. Frayne, as we're being recorded here today, would you please state your first and your last name for the record and, and spell them out for us? Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y, Frayne, F-R-A-I-N. All right. Thank you, Ms. Frayne. Appreciate that. Uh, with regards to uh, New Hampshire, do you live in the state? Yes. Okay. And generally, what town do you live in? Meredith. In Meredith. And uh, what are you doing for work right now? I'm working um, in healthcare at a hospital. Okay. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, almost three years. How far have you gone in school? I'm actually back in school now. Oh, uh, what school. are you studying? Um, where? Uh, what? I'm sorry. What, what are you studying? Um, it's kind of long. Uh, healthcare administration. Okay. Sure. And how long have you been, um, or how long do you have to go before you get a degree? Uh, like three more years. Three more years? Yeah. All right. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so I'm going to ask just one question at a time, so I'd ask you to please listen carefully to either my question or any other counsel's question that you get asked. And if, you, if I'm talking too quickly or if you don't understand my question, just let me know. I'll be happy to restate it, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, prior to where you live now, did you used to live in Manchester back in 2019? Yes. All right. And do you know of somebody by the name of Adam Montgomery? Yes. Um, did you ever used to work at a Dunkin' Donuts on Beach Street in Manchester? Yes. How long did you work there? Um, like five years. About five years? Maybe. Okay. Um, let me ask, you also know the name Kayla Montgomery? Yes. And what was when you, uh, and have you met Kayla Montgomery? Yes. Right. What's the relationship between Kayla Montgomery and Adam Montgomery when you first met them? I met them at work. We worked together. First I worked with Kayla, and then Adam worked with us, too. With regards to uh, Kayla and Adam, did you ever meet Adam's daughter, Harmony Montgomery? Once. One time? Yes. All right. um, did you ever spend time with her? Yes. I babysat her and the two boys, or one boy at the time, at my house. At your house? Yeah. And would this have been back in uh, 2019? Yeah, I think it was the summer of 2019. I'd like to ask some specific questions for you um, about Adam Montgomery, uh, specifically about beginning in the winter of that year at the end of 2019, all right? Okay. All right. Um, did you ever bring Adam Montgomery jumper cables to try to start a car? Yes. How many times have you done that for him? Once. Just the one time? One time. How... Uh, how did he reach out to you for help? He either called me or it was on Facebook. I can't remember which. And he said that their car had died and it was freezing out and they wanted me to come jump start their car. And I told them no, but they kept begging and I felt bad. So I went. Okay. So you said maybe the message you or reached out on Facebook. Is that right? Did you have a, a Facebook account at one point that just went by the name Kimberly Frayne? Yeah. Um, and is that the account that he might have messaged you on? Yeah. Um, what time was this? What time of morning was this that, that Adam reached out, or you got these messages asking for a jump? It was in the middle of the night. I just remember that. It was late. So did you go to where they were and give them a jump? I did. Uh, where did you go? Um, it's behind Elm Street in, I think it's Colonial Apartments. Okay. And is that at the uh, south side of town, west side, or north side of town? It's, like, right down the road from my house on the north side. Okay. Um, when you saw them, do you remember what kind of car they were in at the, that night? Yeah, they were in a blue Audi. Um, now, when you went to meet them, um, uh, first of all, what was the weather like that night? It was cold. It was freezing. So when you got there, uh, who, if anybody, got into your car? I pulled up, and I don't remember the beginning, but I don't think I I brought a like a jumper pack mm -hmm. that my husband, my ex husband had, and a good Samaritan came by, and him and Adam jump started it, and Kayla jumped in my car with the two boys, and we just blasted the heat. 
keep them warm. To keep them warm? Yeah. So you said it was Kayla and the two boys? Two boys. Okay. Um, so I know you said before that you had babysat Harmony on one occasion. Was Harmony there with you? Did she get into the car as well with Kayla and the two boys? No. Did you see Harmony at all while you were there that night? No. And I believe you said a good Samaritan came along. Do you remember who that is or even know who that no, is? No, it was just somebody in the complex saw us struggling. <laughs> okay. Have, and I, I guess I just, I'll just ask this one other question. After that one time, did you ever jump a car for them again? No. Okay. I was distancing myself from them. Do, do, do you remember the uh, exact day that this occurred in the winter of 2019, end of 2019? I don't. Okay. Just that it was very cold out, is that right? Yeah. All right. Just a moment, please, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor, and thank you, Ms. Fran. I have one more question just for you in general. Um, with regards to conversations that you've had with Adam Montgomery, the defendant in this case, um, with regards to those conversations, did you ever have a conversation with him about Harmony having bathroom accidents or, or um, uh, you know, wetting herself or defecating herself in her pants? I don't think so. Not him. Not him? No. Okay. With anybody else? Maybe with Kayla, but I don't remember exactly. Okay. Well, and I don't want you to guess. So if you remember, you remember. If you don't, you don't. I That's don't. okay. And so you're saying your, your testimony is you don't. I don't remember. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for your time. I have no further questions for you. I believe defense counsel may have a few. Thank you. Counsel? Uh, you want to move? You come up? Yes, Your Honor. That. Go ahead. Good afternoon, and I only have a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, you recalled that whatever car that you jumped, it was you thought it was a blue Audi? Yeah. And you know from before that Adam used to drive a Sebring? Um, it was a silver car. Okay. This was not the car that Adam used to drive around, Correct. right? And uh, you remembered this way back in 2021 when the police first asked you about it, right? Yeah. And your memory, even the first time you talked about it, was a blue Sebring? I mean, sorry, Blue Audi. Um, no, I think I might have told them the other. I think I told them it was the silver car, but okay. it was it was the Audi they were in. Okay, so you're really clear about that, huh? Yeah. So what changed when you first said the Sebring and then sort of recalled the Audi? Um, I just couldn't remember the time frames because it was so long ago. Okay. So I understand that, but what changed your recollection of the type of car? Judge, you don't want to ask you to repeat this question. Overruled. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. I think you said at first you told them it was the Sebring, but then um, the blue Audi when they first started questioning you on it, right? Yeah. Do you know what it was that made you uh, say that it was the blue Audi? No. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? You may step down. Council approach. Ten of four, and I don't want to get started with another witness uh, and take you too long beyond four o'clock. So we're going to end for the day.
Um, I know earlier when I left this morning, there were some uh, reports about weather. I have kept an eye on it as we've taken breaks throughout the day. The reports actually look much better than was originally anticipated. Um, and uh, we're New Hampshireites, so um, we're, we're used to weather. But it, it, does not, it does not look like it is going to be the uh, significant weather event that they had originally predicted. So I'm going to keep an eye on the weather uh, throughout the night. At this point, um, the, court, the court will be open. We will, uh, I have every expectation that we are going to go forward tomorrow with trial. Um, so I'll need you here at 845. If anything were to change, uh, we would let you know well before then. Um, I know we, we have contact information for all of you. I'll double check to make sure that that's correct. Um, so keep an eye out on your email or text messages, but I, I think it is extremely unlikely that we would not have trial tomorrow, so you should all plan accordingly. Put your boots beside the door. Um, so 8.45 tomorrow morning, as I said, don't read anything about this. Avoid all news media regarding this case. Don't look anybody up. Don't do any independent research. Um, and I will see you tomorrow morning for a 9 a.m. start. Thank you so much, everybody, for your attention today. All right. All right. Thank you. Great. Can you just make sure that uh, I'll call downstairs to Ann, make sure she has everybody's contact information. Okay. Everybody, uh, you can be seated. Any last minute issues we need to address? Um, you can do it from there. I think, and, and, unless you think there's something that would be privileged, but otherwise, I say do it. Do it from there. Okay. Okay. We heard from uh, Attorney Sheehan. We understand that Mr. Darrell um, would likely go ahead and go for some of the cross examination that we anticipated of him. Um, so, as a result, uh, we suddenly have a conversation in our office this evening as to whether or not we would be granted, and we'll have an answer for you on that prior to uh, him taking the stand, but with the day of him taking the stand. Um, so, we will hopefully go ahead and be able to resolve that issue. Okay. Um, would you say the day of his taking the stand, that 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 would be pro will not be problematic? I don't believe if if immunity is granted, if immunity is not granted, it may become an issue. So we'll need time to do that. Um, Understood, Your Honor. I, I believe that that is. I believe that authorization will likely be given. Okay. Um, so anything, Attorney Smith, Attorney Brooks, you want to say about that? Okay, are you, do you agree with what I just said, which is if immunity is granted, I don't see any issue or the need for any hearing prior to his taking the stand. Obviously, as soon as immunity is granted, you will give any uh, immunity letter to the defense right away, right? Of course. Okay. Um, so, and if in the event that that were not accurate, um, then I'd want to know right away because I, I would want to do, <coughs> want to make sure we have time for a hearing on that. So that, Your Honor, I believe uh, also <coughs> procedure we would have to submit the letter to the court. The court would have to sign off on the order uh, before that would happen, and then obviously count, both sets of counsel will have it. So oh. I would anticipate that that would happen well in advance of him testifying. Okay, good. Um, if there's any issues there, you're going to let me know, I'm sure. Um, so please, please do. Anything else from your perspective that we can accomplish today? No, you're right. Okay. Um, actually, I have every expectation that we will go forward tomorrow. Um, like I said, I, I looked at least, uh, maybe not the last break, but at lunchtime, and it looked like, you know, three and a half inches of snow or something like that. So I think I have every expectation that we're going to go forward tomorrow. If there were any changes, uh, I want the best contact information 
uh, for you all. And maybe, you know, just in case we can't get to one member of your team, maybe it gives makes sense to give us contact information for both. And then once we contact the first person, we would contact, we would have you contact your co-counsel. Um, but like I said, I think I have every expectation that we will go forward tomorrow. So you should have your witnesses ready to go. Um, anybody runs into any trouble, uh, please let us know. Okay. Ah, yeah, excellent. Um, Attorney Agati or Attorney Knowles, do you need to have this, Scott, tomorrow? Or are you going to ask us for a new transport order, or what's the situation? We are not for tomorrow, Your Honor. No. Okay. So you'll keep us surprised yes. of, in, in advance because so, we've got to issue a transport order. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, I think. If you would give it, give your contact information to the clerk, and she and I can sort out what what will happen with that. Um, all right. Anything else? No. Okay. I will see you all tomorrow morning. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. You can give her this stuff. Thank you. you can give her. That. Thanks.